Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. Since when is having three adorable guys hanging around such a bad podcast? Right. Starting over is not for beginners. That's the tagline for the movie, and we need to state this right off the bat because this is an historic I think you need to state this. You need to get this off your chest. As is tradition on the show, we open with a botched quote or tagline from the film. This is the first movie we have ever covered in what, now three years of the podcast? Three plus. Right? Yeah. To not have a quotes page on IMDb. No one has bothered to put quotes on the IMDb page. That includes the Loveless had quotes. Mm -hmm. Piranha 2 had quotes. Praying with Anger, I believe, had quotes. Way to Water. Way to Water had quotes. (laughs) That water sure is heavy. (sighs) The quote was 16 pounds. Just want to get another weight of you. (laughs) Just want to get another weight of you. (laughs) All you got to do is weigh me. (laughs) That's over the fucking line. That's my new one. I'm doing that uh, at home a lot. Starting over isn't for beginners. (laughs) Uh, Hello, everybody. My name's Griffin Newman. Oh, David Sims. I had to point to him. He was missing his cue. <laughs> I usually do. Uh, yep. This is Blank Check with Griffin and David. We're hashtag the two friends. Competitive advantage. We're the only friends who host a podcast and move into a divorced woman's house together. A guest house together. Uh, but, but it's a... Let's call it a compound. It's a compound. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a... Uh, a, a, a what, what am I... A, Fortress. A, a collaborative living community. What are those things called? Yeah. Cooperative living community. I don't know. Whatever. What? Commune. Commune, sure. It's a podcast about filmographies. Directors who have massive success early on in their career and are given a series of blank checks to make whatever crazy passion projects they want. And sometimes those checks clear, mm-hmm. and sometimes they have a baby, <laughs> and then that baby gets to cash their parents' checks. <laughs> baby. Baby. <laughs> They're like, hey, baby, can you take this check to the bank? And they're like, sure thing. Do, 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 do. And then they sneak off and make a movie instead. Oh, you think that's what happened? No, I don't. Was Nancy was just like, here, I have this $12 million in this wheelbarrow. Yeah. And you just cart it over to TD yeah. Bank. Right. She likes TD Bank. Right. And she ran it right over to Open Road Pictures. Sure. Now called Global Road Pictures. Isn't it now called uh, non existent like pictures? Not found, right? yes. you know, like, no, no offense. Close to road. People right. Lost, right. Open Road was AMC and Regal Theater saying, what if we made the movies right. and distributed them only to our theaters in what is kind of a reverse of the monopoly that had to be broken up in the early 1900s where the movie studios also owned the theaters and they were like, no, sir. Right. So now the theaters were like, what if we own the movie studios? And it didn't work very well. Except that they, within a couple of years, won Best Picture. Which is insane. Yeah. Like who did, who, who Spotlight. Who? Oh, that's you crazy. know where people it's are like you know movie. it's yeah. really hard to win best picture if you don't have the experience with the yeah. uh, campaigning right. and all of the sort of infrastructure and then open road won yeah. best picture over the revenant like with spotlight it, it is kind of crazy right. that in the last 10 years summit a24 and open road all won right. best pictures while yeah. being like preemie companies yeah. and two of those companies don't exist anymore well summit kind of exists right I mean, it's just folded it's, it's into lines. It's like a shingle. Yeah. Well, you're a shingle. I am a shingle. I have shingles. My mom had shingles. Did she? Had very, soon. very painful. It's a joke in our family that my mother only gets diseases that haven't existed since the 1800s. <laughs> or she sound has scurvy? like. Yeah, it just every. It sounds like artisanal when my mother's under the weather, you know? <laughs> Are shingles adult chicken pox? Yes. Yes. Um, in Mary Queen of Scots, Margot Robbie gets, or Queen Elizabeth gets them, and the makeup job is very funny. Well, what happened was that Margot Robbie got them, and right. so the <laughs> yeah. Queen had to get yes. them. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, adult chicken pox. I think it's, and I think it's like, it's, the, it's adult chicken pox if you had chicken pox. It's a weird thing oh. where they yes. come back. Right. Because, like, you can be an adult and get chicken pox. I think that's really bad. That's what, what fucks you up bad. Right. Whereas yeah, right. shingles, I think, are just, like, very itchy and annoying and, yeah. like, the worst. But I don't think it's quite as, like, severe. The uh, the chicken pox thing is like when adults haven't had chicken pox, they don't want to go within like a fucking city mile of a kid with chicken pox because then that right. does them in. 
Shingles, I think, is just like, oh, this sucks again. Shingles is that for reasons that doctors don't understand, your yeah. chicken pox returns in like a limited form. Right. But limited is the key yeah, word. Yeah, it's, it's like a you limited got, like, nasty, platform weird release. rashes. Yeah, yeah. It's a right. platform. Right, exactly. Right. It's, 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 it's expanding outward you right. know, from major metropolitan It's sort areas. of like an open road. I mean, it's like right. it's going to be in like major theaters, but not like all of them. And it's like a pretty limited P&A budget. It's disgusting. Correct. Correct. So this is... So essentially we're comparing Home Again to Shingles. Correct. The Shingles of movies. Uh, We've been doing a miniseries called uh, Something's Podcast about the films of Nancy Myers. Mm -hmm. And this is a bonus episode. You know, we've oscillated between the bonus episode being something that's connected to them but wasn't directed by them. Okay. And a non-feature thing that the director did. Right, right, right. But this is going back to the first one, which is a film made by her daughter. Hallie Meyer share. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but is very much, it feels not like a film directed by the daughter of the person who directed Something's Gotta Give, but it feels like the daughter of Something's Gotta Give. <laughs> right. It feels like that movie had a baby and that baby was another movie. Yeah. And all, and the, but like, it was kind of a, a weird kid. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it had a baby, but like kind of a, oh yeah, kind of a weird kid. Well, I would oh, say it's hey. unnatural for movies to uh, give birth. Whatever. I don't want to push my I, politics here. I was going to say, I mean, people can do what they want. I don't movies think movies do should fuck want. each other and I don't think movies should have babies. I just don't think that's a good environment to raise a kid Did in. Did you see who the uh, second unit director of this movie was? Uh, Steven Soderbergh, right? Charles Shire. Really? Yes. Her father. So when, all three of them were on set. I guess so. When I reviewed the movie, I um in the opening paragraph, I said the late Charles Shire. <laughs> and someone on Twitter was like, um. <laughs> <laughs> you just assumed he had died? I didn't. I, I, she's the, made 40,000 movies yeah. about divorce. And I was like, I think she's a widow. <laughs> yeah. And this movie is also about her legacy of her dead filmmaker father. That's like, true. Haunting. That's yeah. true. That's You'd watch this movie right. and you would think was. like, oh, her dad must have died. Right. Uh, but instead of her dad being a dead 70s auteur, he is a living 80s, you know, programmer. Right? That's like, crazy. Yeah. He made Baby Boom. He did? Yeah. He made but, Father but he of the Bride and a Father of the Bride Part since Alfie, right? Uh, yes, except yes, yes. That's his last feature. He has a credit on a Reese Witherspoon indie. <laughs> This weird something about how starting over is not for beginners. <laughs> By definition, frankly. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say something right off the bat. This movie is to me what Spanglish is to Ben. Oh, yeah. Okay. We all like this movie, yeah. then, that means. I Yeah, but I just felt You were the wild card because you hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen it. Right. I hadn't seen it. I was pretty against it when it came out. Oh, you were dead wrong. I was dead wrong. <laughs> I was dead wrong. I, I found this movie charming. Yeah. Uh, so... You had a long time ago when we had floated the idea. Our guest, of course, today. Yeah, introduce the guest. Is is someone soaring into the six timers club now? Yeah, firmly in the six. I guess mm-hmm. so. He he seems to know. I can. I'm going to check the wiki. No, it's six. It's six. Yeah, with with 100 yeah. percent confidence. Yeah, it's six. Mm-hmm. He's our great friend. Our our fabulous. Uh, 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 what's the term I'm looking for? Cohort. Yeah, sure. In bits, colleague, colleague yeah, right, 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 right. He's a writer for Vanity Fair. He's host the Little Gold Men podcast. Richard Lawson is our guest today. Right. Hello. And you had a long, long time ago when you had floated Ang Lee said on mic that you wanted to do Taking Woodstock. Yeah, just because, like, why not? Right. And then people were confused, flummoxed when you were not the guest on the Taking Woodstock episode, but it was because something had superseded that. Yeah. Something had given. <laughs> it had to. Yeah. Right. You wanted to go home again, Richard. I really wanted to go home again, and I watched the um, the Twitter poll to decide on the Nancy Meyer season yeah. with like so much. I mean, right. I was like You're, genuinely yeah, like, right, right. like like you were watching shaking the finals, and crying, and, yeah. right, right. Like, right. And, and then Pico Alexander visited you in a dream. Yes. <laughs> well, some say it wasn't a dream, but <laughs> if he asks, it was a dream. Yeah. But but then you took your token off of taking Woodstock, you put sure, it back right, in yeah. play, and you right. said, "I'm going home." Well, because right. it wasn't even guaranteed, I guess, that you guys were going to do Home Again. Well, I was pretty but sure. I, I we assumed. We knew you wanted to talk about it. It seemed interesting I enough. Her filmography is short. Yeah. David loves it. So the second she won, we were like, yeah. even before she won, when she was clearly like starting to gain momentum, we said, if she wins, we're going to do Home Again. Like right? if James right. Cameron's son had painted a creepy portrait of him, you'd, <laughs> <laughs> you'd talk about that. You'd do an episode on that, right? Yes. Ah, this movie's crazy. Yeah, this is a very strange film. Yes, it is. So this is home the, again. The third movie in this miniseries that I auditioned for. 
You auditioned for this one? I auditioned for this one as well. So you auditioned for It's Complicated, The Intern, and This. Yes. yes. You were going to be Candace Bergen's part? Correct. <laughs> and they gave it to LeBron no. Bergen. You were going to be the director father in the in the beginning. Yes. He was going to play a little a little munchkin that lived in Candace Bergen's pocket. Oh, and then they cut that whole yeah. part out. There's yeah. like a whole extended subplot where she talks to a weird little elf in her pocket. Right. That was the role I auditioned for like five times for It's Complicated. Didn't end up making it in the movie. They shot it and cut it. Right. But they couldn't find someone. And went through two different casting directors trying to find someone for this part. Wait, what What was it? It was, I've said this in this complicated episode, which has come out by this yeah, point. Sorry. But Meryl Streep goes on a Tinder date and the guy shows up and he's like 17. <laughs> and I oh believe it God. was Daryl Sabara. Daryl Sabara ended right. up getting the part and they cut it out. But it I was see. literally, they postponed the shooting of the movie. For because this. this was one of her big like set piece comedy scenes. Right. And then they couldn't do it. And then for the intern I auditioned for, every male role. Right. Right. Like every fucking one. Mostly De Niro, obviously. Yes. <laughs> right. And that was the one I got close to. Right. Right. And then they realized you weren't 70 years old. Which, to be fair, I understand the confusion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no one asked and they just assumed. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. Renee yeah. Russo requested you, right? She did. I mean, Renee and I are just <laughs> such a match. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Um, and, and we just, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so we're one of those legendary pairings. <laughs> yeah. Like you bring yeah. us both on set together, you know, the chemistry you're going to get, but do you want to have the movie like be bogged down with all that baggage? You That's know, fair. like, is it going to be like a, you've got mail or is it going to be like a Joe versus the volcano? Like, is it going to be like, I'm so happy to see them again? Or is it going to be like, this is a little too much too soon? That's totally fair. I understand that. Um, and then this, I auditioned for the Rodnitsky part. You did. I did. Can I, all right, can I start off with a hot take please, about the three boys in yes. the movie? Yeah. yeah. So this movie is, I, I called it on Letterboxd. I the same last. hot take as you because I got a real hot take on okay. the boys. Well, I don't know how hot it is, but it's a take. I got a boy um, hot take. Uh, I, I called this movie Goldilocks and the Three Boys, uh, which- uh, <laughs> Home again, home again, jiggity jig. <laughs> My hot take or whatever is that all the boys are playing the wrong roles. Yes. Okay, so Pico Alexander should be playing the actor. Thank you. 100%. Because he looks yeah. like- He's ridiculous looking. Beyond that, right. No, beyond him looking like a sculpture, right. he acts with the yes. confidence of a 23-year-old actor who just got off the bus in Los Angeles, hasn't booked a job, and thinks he's yes. hot shit. I, I'd seen this movie twice. I was, yeah. It was my second viewing, and I had to pause it and be like, wait, wait, he's the director? Yes. Like, you know, Rudnitsky should be the director, yes. and Nat Wolf should be the writer. Correct. They're all in the wrong role. Yes. Like, it doesn't really matter, but, like, they all are the type of a different type. It does type. kind of matter. I think they put Pico Alexander in his role because he's the most handsome one and he's the one who should end up with He has the triumphant moment at right. the end there. But, all right, what were you going to say? Richard? I was going to say, I took some note, I can't find it now, of, like, with Pico Alexander. It's like, how do, like, hot guys, like, learn how to talk like that? Like, it's just a per- very yes. particular mm-hmm kind of thing where you're like they're young but they're also sound like they've been they're like 45 like yeah it's a really weird it's the thing that gosling does best of anyone yeah Mm -hmm. where it's like the affected sort of like james deany tough guy yeah and the certain there's like a certain vocabulary of face acting that they do where it's like very specific sort of like facial tics to accentuate certain words where they like curl up the side of one like corner of their mouth, you know? Yeah. There's like shit like that and like the half wink and all of this sort of like even the way they walk. And that's like, as you said, that's the stuff that every young actor learns to do. Yeah. He's doing all of that because he's an actor playing a part where that's his bag of tricks. But because you know that's the thing that young actors do, you keep on going, well, he should be the actor character. Right. Yeah, exactly. I he also really think the should. costuming is off. Yes. Because he's wearing an actor's clothing. 100%. Yes, he is. Yes, you know? he is. 100%. And, Rud- and Rudnitsky's the one who's the film obsessed guy, yeah. like mm-hmm. who goes into the director's, uh, like, sort of homage room and is into it. Yeah. Like, he's obviously the director. And then Nat Wolf is the little Jew. He's the writer. I'm See, Jewish. I'm allowed I'll to say, say that. The, the Pico, the Pico Wolf swap is the biggest one for me. I think the movie would work. Still, Ben's, Ben's vaping. vaping. Ben's vaping in the studio. It's got a vape. Producer Ben is vaping. The Venducer is vaping. It just looks like a USB. How do Poet you, Laureate how is do vaping. people fucking do yeah. Peter's vaping. It's helping me quit smoking cigarettes. Oh, Fart okay. Detective's well, vaping. Good. The Meat Lover's vaping. Dirt Bike Benny's vaping. Soaking Wet Benny's vaping. White Hot Benny's vaping. It's the creme brulee flavor. Uh, oh. Can I ask you a question? Is, is Professor Crispy vaping? No, but I am Ben, me, Hosley, oh. vaping. If someone sees you vaping in the streets, so they wish you a, a hello fennel? Yeah, fine. And can you uh, uh, tell me whether or not your vape has graduated to certain titles 
over the course of different miniseries. Hold on, such I'll as, ask it. Yeah, Kylo Ben. Yeah. Producer Ben Kenobi. Ben uh-huh. at Shyamalan, Ben Sate, Save Anything, dot, dot, dot. Ailey Ben's with the dollar sign. Ben 19, The Fennel Maker. Purdue Bane. War Haas. Sure. Mr. Ben Credible. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robo Haas. Benglish. Benglish. Eat. Eat, drink, Ben Hosley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is what there is an it for Myers this one? I don't know. You got a pitch? Oh, we got a... We got the a... Dario gave me one. Some Ben's got to give? I don't know. Some Ben's got to give. Some bad. Ben's what was the one that Dario gave you? Let me find it. Alexandra Dario? <laughs> Follows me on Twitter. Hey, oh, Does lucky she? man. Yep. Lucky man, Richard. Um, uh, Daniel Daddario, of course. Uh, longtime fan, longtime friend. Uh-huh. T- um, variety TV critic mm-hmm. now. Haas, do you know? That's good. Uh, is an old one for, uh, for James right. L. Brooks. It's yeah. Hoslicated. <laughs> I don't know. Might be a little sweaty. <laughs> that was his... Uh... I like some Ben's got a gift. Sure. <laughs> Why not? I don't right? know. I don't fucking know. I, you should know. You of all people. <sighs> Was there no other? I don't know. We'll we'll continue that. There'll be an ongoing subplot. The Ben turn. The, rest of those the Ben turn. Yeah, I like that. Ben kind of likes that. The Hosla day. Yeah. The Hosla. <laughs> oh, that's fuck, that's what that's it is. good. Right. That is what it that's is. Really yeah, that's really okay. good. Something had to give, and that was it. <laughs> um, I think the Pico Alexander one is the one that's really egregious. I think the movie would still work if it was uh, Pico as the actor. Wolf as the director, Radnitsky as the writer. But I think the best version is the assignments that you Radnitsky gave. But, so that, the but then in the plot, does Reese Witherspoon sleep with the actor still? Well, or, or, I mean, just, or, or rather with Pico still. Because I think that like it, he kind of needs to be the one. I kind of you know? think she should be sleeping with the actor. Right. Because the sure. actor also doesn't have but a I, character in this movie. No, not Wolf. Right, what I'm yeah. saying is, Pico Alexander has, like, two things to do. Because A, he's the person trying to get the movie off the ground, right. and yeah. B, he's the person with the romance. So right. you're and saying you move the romance over to the actor, you move Pico over yeah. there, too. Right. right. That's fine. Because the actor character doesn't have much to do but until think, he punches Michael Sheen. Richard, <laughs> right. I, yes, he does. I think what Richard's trying to say is, like, sleeping with the actor is tacky. Sleeping with the director, like, ah, mwah, right. yes, right. oh, molto bene. Okay, but this, I agree, but this is what I kind of like about it. I think this movie is, like, functioning as, like, a corrective for two kind of Nancy Myers things, okay? Uh-huh. This is what I think makes this movie interesting and it somewhat separates it from the Nancy The other thing that makes it interesting is uh, everything that happens in it from the first second of the film <laughs> until the last second. Right. Yeah, all yes. of that. Right, yeah, that yeah, this yeah. film was shot in exclusively inside a bottle of White Zinfandel. <laughs> They had to develop a, a, a fucking pinhole camera oh, and shrink all the actors down to size to fit inside that wine bottle. I mean, what else do they have going on? Ranitsky's um, not busy. He could be shrunk. Uh, what I was going to say is the two things I think are interesting about this film to front load my, my hot takes. One, I think, as you've said, Nancy's very obsessed with the, the kind of older cat. Mm. Right? Like the gross, the incorrigible older man, right? And your it's Nicholson, like your uh, these guys are yeah. gross, and they're womanizers, mm-hmm. and they learn too late. But there is something attractive about them, right? Well, that and then Gibson too, even though he's middle, but like that yeah. kind of like, what can I do? Right. And then at the end, they're like, I understand yeah. that I'm kind of an asshole, and you're <laughs> like, ah, get in here, you. <laughs> and the other thing with Nancy is that that she thinks modern men are kind of boring. Sure. You know, like yeah. even the best of the modern man characters the is the Keanu, right. but it's still like, yeah, but you can't really have a life with him. Yeah. What are He's you, too what are you sweet. He doesn't have guy. edge. Spectacular sex and money. <laughs> right. I do believe that um, Hallie Meyershire has a, a young man in 2017, when the, 16 when this movie came out. Okay. She was with um, a younger man? No, no, no. I, oh. I believe she has him saying in this movie that, that Pico Alexander has that classic Car- Clark Gable thing. And yes. it's like, sure, right. Because like 20 something boys now are always referencing <laughs> Clark fucking 100%. Gable. 100%. Well, I was going to say there's the scene in The Intern where Anne Hathaway like drunkenly dresses down the intern boys right. and is like, look at you men with your untucked yep. shirts. Yeah. I mean, the intern is very much what a, happened to the a Harrison pain Ford. to the old fashioned And look man. at these boys right. with their shirts tucked in or right. at least, you know, well ironed. Which and, is what I think well, Hallie's kind of doing here, which is like her boys. mom thinks that like soft boys aren't can't be sexy. You know, right. they're too soft and they don't have gentlemanly behaviors. And she's trying to go like, here's modern men who are more attuned to your emotions who aren't pigs, but also got a little a little edge to a them. A little ring of day. Know how to yeah. tuck it in. Right. And but the other that thing I think she's saying. makes the movie feel like it's set in another fully dimension. Right, right, which is weird. <laughs> but, but that's also the thing that's most interesting about the movie when viewed through the prism of this miniseries we're doing. Sure. Is that Hallie's going like, oh, maybe it is kind of cool if you date younger men. Which Nancy's like, men do that, but that's why they're dumb. You should be with people your own you're age. You're right. You're right. She is yeah. arguing for. I mean, this is 
this film has more like it has men that you just would never see in a Nancy Myers. Movie. No, like yeah, these the men would just not talk like, in a Nancy the Myers. Movie. They would just stand right. there. Which I think why it, it makes it so surreal because like. But they are sort of they are there, but they're not supposed to be there. There's something wrong. Okay. There's something deeply like, wrong. So this is my. They are the take, sign yeah. that it's like an inception. Yeah, where right, like exactly. your subconscious should attack Rudinsky right. and tear like him the to top, pieces. The top is still spinning. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, <laughs> this is my hottest take on the movie. This film is set in Marianne Cotillard's dream. That is actually this true. That's why 9/11 never happened in that movie. My hottest take on I don't the know. movie. I think it's a great joke. Ten comedy Thank points. Um, my hottest take on the movie is that, that joke was for you. I know. I loved it. No, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I was just worried that you were going to get to my take before. No, That's go, why I kept take, yelling. Do your it. take. Do your it's kind of a parallel take to your joke. Uh-huh. I think this is a Brigadoon movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a movie about three men wandering who end up in the wrong film. Do you think? <laughs> you know, like it's like like. Oh, or what about this? What? Reese Witherspoon and how do you know she gets on that bus yeah. from that fucking dimension that's like dimension X <laughs> which is the same bus that like Thora Birch got on at the end of Ghost right. World where you don't know where the buses go and right? it takes right. her to some like third dimension yeah. like which is where this is set right like no because I think she is of this dimension I get, I get what you're saying right they have wandered in from some a different movie set like I want right. this movie to take the Turing test you know like <laughs> <laughs> I just think, like, these three guys are in, like, a Judd Apatow, like, acolyte, like, bro movie. But and then they not. get on the wrong they're bus. They're nice. Yeah. They're nice boys. I'm not saying a bad one. What if boys were nice? Well, that's her her <laughs> biggest. That is the pitch of this movie. Is yeah. What if there were some nice boys? Which yeah. only feels novel like, to her because happens, she grew up in a Nancy like, Myers house. Which is why yeah. it's so creepy. I mean, like, I wanted Reese and Pico to get together at the end because I think that yeah. that would have been more transgressive and more interesting yes. than, like, oh, of course we can't be together. Right. But there's also something deeply creepy about that these nice boys be at least one of them being sexualized you yeah. know like it's weird yes. it's weird because it's the, she's like weird. mommy and yeah. they're learning it's about young people learning to love or appreciate not a love appreciate a nancy myersian woman yes yeah right. and a movie directed by nancy myers's daughter right. so basically right. she's saying like appreciate how your mom always has flowers in the house even if she's a little tyrannical about it <laughs> yeah is like maybe also sleep with hot. her? Like, yeah. <laughs> and also, yeah. it has that knocked up pitch of like one wild night leads to one crazy movie. Yeah. Like, right? Which is yeah. why I'm saying Except the Apatowy like, thing. What? Yeah. Is, you know, I know I'm agreeing yeah. with you, but then it. But like the wild night is like they drink a little wine. He can't hold his liquor, right? And like that's it. Like it's not like nothing crazy they happens. Do some clothes. This pissing. movie just yeah. throws you into. Yeah, a swimming pool, but then it turns out the swimming pool is like made of champagne or whatever, right? <laughs> right. Like it's like yeah. you're like, wait, this isn't what I expected. Like, it just starts. It starts things off right away. It's very bizarre. And then when they set up the Rudnitsky thing, you go like, oh, is this gonna be some weird love like triangle love kind of square thing, right? movie where all three guys are fighting for her? Right. But it's just like I think. I mean, a I think this movie is Hallie Myershire's argument in favor of boys. Because Nancy Myers makes movies about men. Right, yeah. And has no fair. respect for boys. She's, and she's defending going her like, generation. Right, boys right. are good too. Kind of. But right. she's doing it with examples that are not from her generation. And then that's right. the other thing. Or any thing. generation. She summoned <laughs> right. three <laughs> beings. Do you think she just did a dark ritual by mistake and it produced these three boys? And then she was like, I have to put them in a movie, I guess. You know like, what it was? came out of a portal. <laughs> she was building the machine from the fly. Right, and right, right. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, it's complicated DVD fell in the machine. <laughs> <laughs> While Pico Alexander, John Renisky, now. Yeah. Wolf were just chilling in it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> there was home again. Well, that the other thing I think this movie is kind of doing is like all the Nancy Myers movies about the cads. They realize too late in life, like oh, women are people too. Right. I should have treated them with respect, and they finally right. get it together at age like sixty one, <laughs> like a spring sixty one, right? Right. And I think this movie is like, what if they don't end up together? But this situation made these three men in their mid-20s, these three boys in their mid-20s learn how to be better men down the line. Yeah. Like, none of these boys will turn into Alec Baldwin or Mel Gibson or Jack Nicholson. Right. Because they've had this experience, and they, like, in a way, now understand who a woman is as a human being because they've been, like, let into her life in this very intimate way in terms of, like, not just the sexual stuff, but, like, her kids, you know, and her, like, career aspirations and all these sorts of things. This is a movie about, like, how a better generation of men is going to come out of living with 
<laughs> Nancy Myers. Right, but it's also like set that. inside of White like man. a Windows 98 screensaver. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like there's just, you're just like, what is this world? And you feel like if Renitsky like walked six blocks, there would be like a, a barrier. <laughs> it would be a Truman Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would just like, like come around the other side. You'd be <laughs> hey, like, wait hey, a second. Guys. Wait. In a different tucked in shirt. <laughs> there is one moment in this movie that made it very clear that they were living in a simulation. <laughs> Which is the scene where Rodnitsky tries to steal the look at Reed Scott's iPad. Uh-huh, and in yeah. any other movie, it'd be like they're at a restaurant. And he's like, hold on, I have to take this. And he would step outside of the restaurant right, to right, take right. the call. And so they'd have a little bit of room yeah. to and go so he's on a beach. He walks two feet away. Less. <laughs> and they're like at full voice. Hey, don't do that. Yes. And he's like shouting everything on the iPad. And he's also not stationary. Like he's two feet away and right. he's walking and shifting and like peripheral vision at any moment. And then, and then I want to walk. Rodnitsky's at the opposite end of the Reed table. Scott turns around. Rodnitsky yeah. is holding the iPad and screaming. He like throws the iPad down. Runs, runs back to his chair. As Reed Scott style. just looks at him. Yeah. Sits in the chair and like sort of puts his napkin in with like a flourish kind of like a. Right. You know, like like that. Right. And, and Reed Scott's like, hey, what's up? Are you okay? Right. And then two black cats walk by in quick <laughs> succession and they realize that they're still in the matrix. Not like this. <laughs> Not like this. Not like this. Oh, my God. So this is the unofficial fourth Matrix movie. <laughs> it's deranged. This movie and is so it. good. All right. So this movie came out. Richard yeah. and I were talking about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, in September, yeah. early September 2017, mm-hmm. right as we were going to the Toronto Film Festival. Sure were. It came out of the worst possible time. Yes. Why they would release it then, I have no idea. No. It like was largely ignored. Yeah. It made a little money. Uh, yeah. It made $27 million. So it made it doubled its budget, its small budget. Right. But at the time, Witherspoon was so like big that because of Big Little Lies and stuff, and you thought that maybe... it's They should have struck when the iron was hot. Right. Yeah. Did this come out before or after Big Little Lies? Just after. Just after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was Big Little Lies air... In like that um, summer, the summer. No, it aired in February. Jeez, of seventeen. Oh, seventeen. It started in February. Right. So, so well, it yeah. ended in like mid April. April. Yeah. So it was oh, okay. yeah. early yeah. April. Yeah. yeah. Like, release that movie in early April. That's when Book Club came exactly. out or Board Game May or whatever. They, yeah. Why they released this not in it's some of that sort of spring? This window. is a yeah. spring movie, a hundred percent. It's a it's terrible bizarre. September film. Yeah. So Richard, and it was s- first week of September too. So it's first like, week of September, which it's like is right after the when summer film ended. critics are yes. not engaged. Right. Like they yes. are busy with Point festival and awards shit or whatever. Like right. Like I took time out for it while in Toronto to review this movie, which I don't feel like any like most yeah. people didn't. I was just obsessed. That's with it, like so. the weekend that like Axel comes out. You know, yeah. like all which those is dog an open movies road movie. Yeah, right. It's the like last almost, one. It's it's is it worse than a Labor Day weekend release? Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. it is. Because, yeah. right, at least at Labor Day weekend, you will get the Some extra day. day. I, I would yeah. argue this is the second worst weekend of the year behind the first week of January. Right. Where you know the top movies are going to be whatever the big things were for yeah, Christmas. Right. And if they release something in the first week of January, it's like they're trying to— It's just to, some horror movie or that's it. Like, right. wasn't um, that Julianne Moore witch movie? The first week in January. Julianne Moore witch movie. Do you mean Helen Mirren witch movie? Do you mean Winchester? No, I mean Julianne Moore is a witch and it's like medieval days and it's Stop supernatural. Stop saying that oh, she's a witch. The Seventh Son. The Seventh Son. Yeah. Oh, right. With Jeff Bridges, which was pushed back which, three and a half years. Right. It was like shot yeah. in like yes. 2001. Yes, like that's when that movie right. It's just video game like Tamagotchis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's like you release those movies like – if you have a really expensive movie that's a nightmare and you know it's going to lose money, you right. release it the first week of January and go like, well, we got steamrolled by Avatar. What could we do? Yeah, yeah right. No one saw that coming. Right. Um, so this movie came out. You saw it at a press screening, I'm assuming. Yeah. I skipped the press screening for like reasons. I took Bobby I Finger. Mm-hmm. Sure. Bobby Finger. We, both, we walked down the, the block like afterward, like silent until we got to the stoplight because we had no idea what you, to say. You, yeah, you, you, well, you had to get immediately to an emergency yeah. defibrillator, so right? You're yeah. Yeah. you yeah. are saying on the record that this movie got fingered. <laughs> it sure did. I know he's been on fingered. this season. Did yeah. he tell yes. you the story about meeting Nancy Myers? No. I don't think he oh. did. Oh, it's oh, fuck so Bobby. Bobby. I took him to the um, premiere for the intern okay. and there was a party afterward at uh, Tavern on the Green. And so we were there it. and there was Nancy and, you know, I, I, once in a while at a party, like, I'll go up and say hi to somebody. I don't like to do it, but mm-hmm. if it's someone like that, I, and I was with Bobby. Yeah. So I went up and I, and I introduced myself and I was like, and this is my friend Bobby B- Finger. He writes for Jezebel. And Nancy Myers whips around to her assistant and goes, Bobby Finger. And she turns back to Bobby and she says, we know Bobby Finger. And Bobby, Bobby literally fell down. Obliterated. Down. Like, right, right. He, he went to the, proje- the, to the dimension where, dimension, right. <laughs> oh my God, he brought it back. Um, 
And he she, went home again. She basically. knew him because he comments on her Instagram sometimes, and he has such a distinctive name. Of course. And it was uh, the most amazing moment he ever. He is one of the best names in the world. Yeah. It's an incredible name. Yeah. When you hear that that's his real name, not that it wouldn't be, but like you're like, I can't believe it. That's his name. He yeah. was well, just given all, that name. Finger is a great last name. Right. And it sounds like a name that a screenwriter would make up. Right. Right. And then Bobby is somehow the perfect it's first great, name. Yeah. 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 It's a great and even name. when he gets older, like Robert Finger has like yeah. some, Bob some Finger. majesty. Bob Finger. <laughs> so you saw anyway. it with uh, Bob Finger himself. <laughs> I missed, Dickie Lawson and Bob Finger. I missed one of the pictures. The press screen. Because I was busy or something. They, they just screened it like the one time or whatever. Like David, I couldn't make. David, how could you? Well, but that meant that I got to see this film in the perfect environment, which mm-hmm. was at the Cobble Hill Cinema five weeks after its release Ooh, yeah. Yeah. with an exclusively 50 plus audience. Oh, wonderful. And a fly that kept sort of lazily flying in front of the projector. So <laughs> uh-huh. like frequently it was sort of just dangling in front of Candace Bergen. And when Candace Bergen said, says, I mean, they laughed throughout. It was like yeah. Showtime at the Apollo. That like, fly they, was, they were losing their minds. That fly was Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cursive machine <laughs> um, but the line where Candace Bergen said like you know uh, and he died so I went yeah right? right yes which is like you know a cutesy sort of Myers knockoff line like they acted like yeah it was Nancy like slid that <laughs> line under Hallie's door Right. You can take this one, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they they just erupted. I thought they were going to burn the theater down. Like, you know, they started like tearing the seats out of their fucking It was like an Italian World Cup match or something. Yeah, exactly. They all started blowing vuvuzela. <laughs> Sandman took a nap because he knew there was no chance they were going to make him tap out the movie. Oh my God. That is a I perfect way to see that out. movie. Wow, that is incredible. Um, So it was a great place. To see it, and I love the movie. Yeah. But when I was, so I was like, you know, when I was putting it back on for this, I'm like, you know, was that just sort of a great, like, experience? Sure. Yes. Like, it's just such a silly thing. I put it on. It's like taking a Xanax. You just sort yeah. of, like, slip into the tub and, like, so feel so relaxed. This yeah. Movie. yeah. Yeah. Even though it's so aggressively bizarre. Yes. Well, that's the thing is that. You 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 relax and then all of a sudden you'll jolt you'll jolt awake and you're like wait what the fuck am I watching like <laughs> wait, wait Richard what are we doing <laughs> what are, what are we doing uh, I love any movie where there's the moment yeah, where they like, pull away from the kids what what are we doing yeah it's um, so annoying it's like he he was he missed one dinner I know like come on I know he's also trying to get a movie made like cut him some slack. and it also like wasn't a serious thing like you see the dinner it's like this is just like you're like wine it was like a Tuesday night and they were just having a dinner party and he had like work drinks and it's like oh work drinks ran late right and she clearly states like it's not a big deal you don't have to dress up fancy or anything right yeah so the just wear your your, you know like a Brooks Brothers shirt like nothing nothing right nothing right I mean, the other thing is a like, fresh, I said this never to before Richard worn. Mike. Don't wear something you've ever worn before. And <laughs> yeah. Ben, yeah. I, you heard this. Really, yeah, I put it on. I watched the film for what felt like 10 minutes. And fell asleep. No, and then turned to Joanna and was like, well, how, when did I put this on? She was like, an hour and 20 minutes ago. It's almost over. Because I was like, it seems like it's almost over, but I feel like I just started this movie. Wow. Like, it just sort of like breezes by. I mean, this is playing really well into my Brigadoon theory because time yeah. works differently in Brigadoon. It, I That's think it's true. also just I'd watched all these Nancy movies yeah. where you're always like, fuck, there's a fifth act. Like every yeah. time it like rears its ugly head where suddenly like we cut to like six they're in months Paris later. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you're yeah. just like, oh, I forgot like there's 20 more minutes. Well, you know, every day is a century <laughs> in these mountains. <laughs> so this movie is set in the Brigadoon Mountains yes. and it's about Alice Kinney mm-hmm. played by Reese Witherspoon do, 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 who amazingly has never do, been in a do, Nancy do, Myers movie. No, and I think that's the main reason she did this. Yeah. So when I auditioned for this, um, it was to star Rose Byrne. Yes. And I went, wow, I can't believe they got Rose Byrne to do this. Because she at the time was like not doing rom-coms. Right. You know, right. she was sort of being in boy comedies and still doing a lot of dramas and stuff. And then she ended up doing Juliet Naked, which is sort of like a similar kind of. And, like- and, and Richard's beloved, The Meddler. Wow. Not a rom-com, though. Great no, well, movie. I guess it is between no. Fruits and Sarandon. But it's sort of a yes. light. Not comedies, quote unquote, even though watching yeah. that movie for me is like like what I assume like World War II veterans feel like when they watch Saving Private Ryan. Right. Uh, I love my mother. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's your turn uh, uh, no, but to the, talk now. The Meddler, the Meddler and this have a lot of similarities. I mean, that film isn't the young daughter having the romance, but the sort of light, like uh, sort of relationship, world, like larger relationships comedy set in the entertainment industry. Yeah. You know? Um, 
But so I was surprised Rose Byrne was doing it, and then they announced like, "Oh, Rose Byrne drops out," and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Doesn't seem like the kind of movie she's interested in doing." This was she's too young too. Right before she had done those sorts of things, I think this character was written younger at the time. Yeah, I feel like when I read it, they wrote it up once it was Reese. Sure. And then they got Reese, and I think the answer is because Reese is around forty. When she well, that's the interesting yeah. thing is that like. You know, it's Hallie Myers Shire who was 30 when the movie came out yeah. and yes. Nancy Myers who's in her late 60s. Yeah. Yeah. And so this character is in is in between them. And so it's right. not about mom and it's not about daughter. It's right. just right. about some weird kind of version of maybe both of them. I don't know. Right. I mean, clearly the, the Meyer Shire family is obsessed with divorce, right? It's like this thing that they like can't get this over is true. on all sides. Um and, and which is especially weird because, you know, the the two of them did a rec- reconcilable differences together. But it seems to be this, like, you know, like this original sin that, like, everything has to revolve around. But um, but I, I think I remember reading the script and the character being much closer to Hallie Myershire's real right. age. Okay. And then I think if Reese Witherspoon wants to do it, you rewrite it to make it Reese. And I think it works better when the age difference is I a little agree. more pronounced. It has to be. I, yeah, you know? it yeah. seems almost weird because then it's like if, if she's, like, 33 or whatever. yeah. yeah. Then what, we're talking about someone who had kids when she was like twenty. I found like, the what's... script really annoying it's when that right. was. I mean, it's like that right. classic Hollywood thing where everyone has to have had a kid as, at the youngest age possible yes, right. to justify the generational gap. And yeah. it also felt at the time, and I may be misremembering this, but it felt at the time like, oh, this character is really unlikable because of how much she's overselling how much older she is than these boys when she's not that different in age. Right. You know, whereas like 40 and 27, there's a big generational gap. It's like there's my like, therapist gets mad at me and I say I went on a date with a younger guy and he's like, how old? I'm like 29. He's like, Richard, that's right. Like, it's barely anything. Right. But so it's like 27 and 33 like isn't the same thing as like 27 and 40. Yeah, it's a big difference. Right. Right. And the life cycles, you know, she's gone through and all of that. And I think like Reese at this point, like this is her first romantic comedy in a while because they just weren't yeah. fucking getting made anymore. So yeah. it seemed odd like oh, Reese with is doing like an indie romantic comedy for open road but it's like but otherwise she's not going to get her fix she started like <laughs> she's, yeah, she's tapping walking the around she's hollywood sh- and vine tapping no, her wrist on i think, <laughs> I think her genre kind of died and she's had a really good sort of like dramatic actress reinvention but i think she still just loves being in these types of movies it seems really pleasant you're surrounded yeah. by beautiful furniture food pico alexander like right. it's why not and she's someone who knows how to do this with a real light touch and it's like mm-hmm. okay the last time she did one of these was how do you know which yeah. lost so much fucking money yep. and essentially killed the genre kind at of. a studio yeah. level. Right, because post then, her career is uh, Water for Elephants, right. which was the best movie about um, Water Wa- for Elephants. Watering elephants. Yeah, exactly. Well, Elephant other than water. Weight of Water for Elephants. Yeah, fuck. Is Christoph Waltz still running that circus? Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, if, if you ever have to interview him, you have to go to the circus. So. Welcome. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my trapeze artist. The greatest Showman 2 is about them squaring off, right? Like, yes. <laughs> and he's riding an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> um, then this means war. Right, which was like... Which is garbage. <laughs> right. Real abomination. Right, but that's like, oh, maybe studios will still make romantic comedies if they're disguised as another genre. If they're like romantic comedies for if boys. A, if there's a gun in it. With yeah. guns. <laughs> and everyone's like, fuck this. Yeah. That's also that's her with two younger guys, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And it's two great actors, and the movie's a nightmare. Yeah, three great actors. It's three actors I love. Like, three of my favorite working movie stars in that movie is a fever. Angela great. Bassett's in it. Uh, then Four somebody, of my yeah. favorite! Then yeah. that, that Adam McGoyan movie, Devil's Knot, which, like, I don't even know if that, that ever was came supposed out. to be. So that was, like, during... With like, Colin Firth, right? She was yeah. trying to get back on track, and so right. she was doing, like, more serious stuff I'm gonna stuff go back again. to Roots. Yeah, yeah. and, and that was, That's a West like, Memphis 3 movie, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, right. That's right. It's like, that, why make that movie when you have, the, like, two different documentaries yes. about them that are, that are really good, so... Right, but that was, like, could really play that didn't really work. Then she does Mud... Uh, yeah, she's, well, she's mud really there. fucking she's good great in mud. mud. Yeah, and then she has because um, the reconnaissance was happening at the same time as she was kind of right. trying to. And I think mud starts. They make both people debuted like, together in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Four. Right. Two Texan. No, that's Renee Zellweger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck Zellweger. you. Right. right. She's from Tennessee. Because Reese is in right. uh, Man on the Moon. Yeah, she's or from Tennessee. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I'm far. F- uh, yes, far off place. Yes, yes. Right. Whatever. Ethan Embry. Yeah. Far off place. And something called Jack the Bear. But look, I'm not doing her whole filmography. No. I'm going back to 2014 because we have to remember that she produced Gone Girl and Fincher fired her from it. Yes. Essentially. Well, yeah. Right? Like yeah. She optioned the book because she right. wanted to make it as a starring vehicle. She got Fincher to agree to make it. And his right. first move was, you're not playing the uh, Gone Girl. Amazing Amy. Right. Yes. 
Uh, and then, but then that same year she did Wild, right. which she's amazing in, which Phenomenal. is another thing where she like produced it and yep. optioned it, and right. And that's when I feel like she's regained her sort of critical respect. It is interesting though because she is too old for both of those roles, mm -hmm. which is the reason one of the reasons Fincher didn't want her. Yeah, she's basically forty at that point. But and in Wild, sometimes you're like, she, yeah, come on, like what she's supposed to be twenty eight years old. But it doesn't matter. She's, she's so she's good. Great, yeah. yeah. So you just kind of don't care about it. Like and in Gone Girl, I I think she probably could have pulled it off too. Like I'd love well, to see her. Well, the thing about her, her I think, think Rosamund Pike is amazing in Gone Girl. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 you know, Rosamund Pike benefited from the opportunity more in a way that you know. Yes, yes. Um, yes. But like, I mean, I'm so glad another like beautiful blonde white lady um, <laughs> got to be yeah. a movie star. But um, it, you know, I, I first knew Reese Witherspoon. I mean, from Far Off Place and yeah. from Man on the Moon, but also from like Freeway and Election and stuff like Pleasant that. And where she, right. she was doing Dar Pleasantville. She's a she's a she's a meanie. In she that. was like a good like, dark comedy actress. Yeah, yeah cool. so cool. intentions is right, like what right. creates her like uh, cutesy image. Yeah. And then there's that annoying thing that I think but happens. No, yeah, she's a in lot. American Psycho too. Don't forget her head's right, in her fridge. Right. The other thing that I think happens a lot with romantic comedy actors is like, look at that. That's a great track record of her working with really good directors, giving great performances, really interesting parts, right? And then she becomes a movie star and everyone goes like, oh, it's like Reese Wilson. That's like the thing she does. Yeah. And well, legally blonde. Which she should have gotten a, a fucking star. Oscar nomination Don't for. Yell at me. She's unbelievable in that film. Yeah, she's great. But I think what people think go like. Blonde? I think it's great. I just wrote something. Um, well, it'll be out now in, in when this airs uh, for the magazine about defending the Golden Globes musical comedy category. Sure, right. and like she got nominated for that, and the yeah. Oscars were never going to do it. So no, no and that's course. like a yeah. private Benjamin level performance. Yeah. Like that's like she should have gotten that kind of recognition, I think, for that film. But then I feel like people start writing her off when she won the Oscar for Walk the Line. I remember people being like, "Well, I didn't know Reese Witherspoon could actually act like that." And it's like, what about all of her work in the nineties? People also said monster. she only won because it was a weak year or whatever. You know, she's yeah. so she's so good at Walk the Line. I, I I will say that's probably my seventh favorite performance of hers. Oh, I I love her. In that I just movie. I would she's have given her Oscars for several things over that. I think she's better mm -hmm. in Wild. I think she's better in Legally Bond. Better in Election. But I think she's better in Wild. She's so good in Election, but it's also like she's being used so incredibly well in that movie. So aggressive and strange. Yeah. And like, but that's so I I think that's like amazing. one of those like once in a lifetime performances of just everything. Like I, I you know, think because poorly. of what Richard's saying, she's almost underrated in Walk the Line, which you have not seen. I've never seen. Um, wow. But uh, I have seen Hot Pursuit, though. Right. In which she was in Hot Pursuit of uh, yeah. Sofia Vergara. Right. The movie we defiantly announced we were going to see and, and then never did. Um. Yeah. And you know she's in a bunch of other shit. Who fucking? Cares? Anyway, all that said. Yeah. Her in this movie, it's 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 nice to watch because it's very natural. She's right. just very much at oh, home. She just knows what um, she's doing. And also, it's like maybe she wanted a, t a thing where it's like you know, this is about a wealthy woman in her forties. Yeah. yeah. New, I mean, you know, Reese Witherspoon split up with Ryan Felipe earlier than her forty, but mm -hmm. like you know, just I think two, you know, a couple kids, like just kind of assessing that situation and sort of reflecting on it, you and know? look, she's, like, proven herself. Like, at this point now, okay, post Walt, she's gotten the second Oscar. She's made a couple really good, well-respected movies again. The, the nomination, sorry. You know, even having, like, Gone Girl as a producer, her good taste in developing things, Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies is huge. Right, yeah. so then you're just like, yes, she should get yeah. to sit back and enjoy the fruits of her labor by doing that movie, the type of performance that no one gives her credit for, but that she clearly enjoys. And is more skilled at than most people of her generation. Yeah, and nepotistic as it might be, like get a young female filmmaker's film made. You yeah. know, that movie does not. I mean, it would have a harder time getting eyes on it. We even with Rose Byrne, you know, one hundred percent. I mean, I just even though this was an open road film and it was like a pretty cheap film, you know, it, the film got I think more attention in terms of seeming like a legitimate rom com because Reese Witherspoon's in it. Like Reese Witherspoon's this amazing piece of like rom com art direction. Where if you put her on screen, it, like, adds production value. It's sad that since this movie, she's been in one movie. Uh, in her advice? No, no, that was, that was before. before. Oh, that's a, that's which I think she's very good in that, too. She's I know great. people are mixed on that performance. I think she's very good in that. She's been in one film since then. It's going to blow your minds when you remember the movie that she's been in since then. Uh, if you don't I... guess very soon, I'm going to give you a great hint. Okay. Okay. Is, is she the lead in it? No. She's like a major supporting role. She's like a major supporting role. It's not an and Reese Witherspoon. It's like the third no, lead. I don't think so. I forget. Uh, the crediting for that movie was weird, this movie. It's got a weird billing. She okay. was second build. She was second build in a movie. All right. Oh, oh, oh. She turns oh, oh, into oh, oh. a giant head of lettuce. 
Oh God, of course, Wrinkle in Time. Yes, right. What were you thinking of? It wasn't that clearly. No, what no. Were you thinking of? No, I I was thinking in the realm of that type of movie, but I couldn't figure out what it was. God, yeah, Wrinkle in Time. Right, and she has second build in that. Yeah. Mrs. What's it? Mrs. What's it? Uh, that is, is a she... movie we will 100% cover someday on the show. You should. Oh, that movie is when I was like, Ava DuVernay is getting a blank check. Assuming she just makes like at least a couple more movies. Like, yeah. this is because that movie's crazy. Right. Yeah. That movie's yeah. insane. That movie is crazy. Right. Like, that's someone like where we're just like, I can't wait until she has a slightly larger filmography and we can talk about it. Right. Her. Yeah. Because you don't want to do there. She's a three got like film four miniseries. Four movies She's now, got I think. four now if yeah. you count 13. Yeah. yeah. Especially if she makes a fucking New Gods movie. Well, right. Um, but yeah, no, because, you know, it's like Big Little Lies is consuming her, I guess. Like, yeah. she's just sort of not. Uh, she's got Draper James, you know, she's got her little bit, her business. Yeah, she's got her yeah. Instagram, which is a full time job. Yeah. yeah. She's got uh, her, like, kind of odd veneration of the Antebellum South, but, you know. <laughs> she just released her. <laughs> Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. I just saw a Target. She released, like, a cookbook memoir called, like, Whiskey in a Teacup. Yeah. She's doing a whole lifestyle. It's like thing. her lifestyle. Thing. And if you yeah. look at her website, Draper James, because um, I follow her on all social media platforms. Yeah. Uh, that stuff is expensive. So she, sure. l- like like the, the Meyer Shires, like yeah. appreciates the um, the finer things. I mean, who wouldn't if they had that kind right, of money? But, but she's got that sort of like southern down-home comfort thing that I think makes her look less like elitist than your your Goops. Your Blake yes. Lively. Yeah, and I think that's Blake Lively is the worst. What was hers called? Preserve. Right. Yeah. yeah she Where she was to trying to do like a weird something. like – right. American West thing, but she lives upstate. Like it was a very odd. But even if Reese Witherspoon is like, oh yeah, I can afford these four hundred dollar paper clips. At least it's like, but they're Southern fried. Right. You know, there's like that <laughs> element rather than like the Gwen oh. Paltrow thing, where it's like, don't fucking tell me a Walmart customer what kind of shampoo I should buy. I, right, I could go for a fried paper clip right about now. Well, well that's the thing. Right, clip. like the, the Reese Witherspoon thing is just that everything is like, ooh, yeah, a little touch of a mint yeah. julep. I Whereas love like that the, she, the Gwyneth like, Paltrow yeah. one is like, this will give you psychic power. I went yes. to the, the moons of Jupiter <laughs> right. extracted this dust. But even the whiskey in a teacup thing, like I kind of like that like Reese Witherspoon owns the brand of being like a little bit tipsy. Like a little oh, bit in her cup. I was going to say that, you know, because I, I, like kind of we're recapping the movie, like when she when she's out drinking with the boys, yeah. I was just like, I went and rewatched her getting arrested, her dancing at weddings. Like she's one of my favorite. Well, Hollywood let's drums. talk about Reese Witherspoon's greatest performance of the last <laughs> decade. I am an American. <laughs> Well, that one's great, yeah. but the one who is it in the at the Met Ball where she's in the the elevator? Oh, and she's like Cara Dale, how do you say your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a classic one, right? And then she says to someone else in the elevator, she's like, "You want to know how you get men coming back? You do something so crazy, crazy, you'll have them whisper in your name into their pillow." Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking cool. <laughs> she's uh, terrific. She's the business, as Paul Thomas Anderson said when he locked the gates. Reese Witherspoon is the fucking business. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You yeah. know how she met um, Ryan Felipe? Is he oh, was at her well, like twenty first birthday party, and she walked up to him and she was like, "Are you my birthday present?" <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, she said that in many interviews. Fucking Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Which they mayor. hadn't been in Cruel Intentions yet. They were. They were like gonna be. Uh, yeah, I guess that must have been the case. They were like circling the young Hollywood parties, probably. You know. Uh yeah sure. Um, so the Reese be- Witherspoon is the goddamn. Person. I think that's true though because I remember like whoever the what's the name of the director of Cool Intentions? It's uh fuck it Cumble, I know Roger Robert, uh, Roger Cumble. Uh, right yeah because the guy who directed Robert- Just Friends. Who's the one who went to jail for the drunk driving thing? That's know. the guy who directed Rules of Attraction. Oh sure, Roger Avery. Roger yeah, Avery. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah. Rich Robert Roger Cumble. Yeah, who directed um Just Friends the, and the sweetest thing and College Road Trip. I don't even know what that one. Martin is. Lawrence and Raven Simone. <laughs> Sure. Oh yeah. The sure. Disney picture. I just remember it on like him being like saying how felt bad he felt in Cruel Intentions because he has to like have them have a big fight and then kill Ryan Philippe. And he was like, you know, they were they were in love right, and they were right. so cute together. <laughs> I had to make them do all this horrible stuff. It's and- just weird that he made Cruel Intentions and then only made like super fucking broad comedies after that. He, he's a weird guy. He's a weird guy. Um. Yeah. Uh. So. The so movie Reese, starts with Reese a montage of John Kinney, which I think is pretty well done. I do too. The, like they they use they they fake old stuff, but they also use actual footage so of Candace. Who is John? Like who's playing him? Who's the guy? I don't know. I didn't recognize him. Okay, let me see. Um, who do we think he's supposed to be? Kind of like because the legacy she crafts for him is different than Charles Shire's like legacy. Hell Ashby or something. I was like, thinking like Paul Mazursky, but yeah, a little yeah, more yeah. awarded. Yeah. Right, Someone because it's like David Nett. Because it's not like it's not like Coppola. It's not like no, the intense. No. You know, no. It's like a it's, Paul Mazursky if he had had like like a James L. Brooks level hit in his career, maybe. You know, because yeah. 
because it feels like he's more prolific and more of like a strictly filmmaker than James L. Brooks was. But it's that kind of like he makes relationship dramedies. He probes the human condition. They seem light. He's big in the 70s. Yeah, he's like an Ashby or Mazursky or some kind of, you know, person that young filmmakers and actors uh, uh, lionize. Okay. Right? Sure. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Good at movies, bad at women. Okay. Right? He's, he's kind of a cad. But loves his daughter. Right. He's sort of the who would be the protagonist of a Nancy Myers movie. Yeah. But he's right. dead he, by the time this film he's starts. He's dead. Right. Instead so of being Hallie alive. has killed Nancy's darling, yes. basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's what feels kind of symbolic. Uh, yes. Yes. And, and she lives in this sort of. His house. Lovely house that's sort of like a weird mausoleum to his career, I guess. Right. Yeah. She was living in England with her husband. New York. Oh, they're in New York. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because her husband's like a music producer. He's looking right. for the next Sam Smith. Yeah, in my who's doing a concert in Miami, which is I don't think where you would find the next Sam Smith. No, takes no, no. The longest pause after saying like, "I need to stay here for this concert." He might be the new Sam Smith. Like he he puts such a fine point on the yeah. enormity of what he's. It's saying. also weird to to hear in a movie that looks like a Nancy Myers movie anyone any reference to anyone who isn't like you know. Carly Simon or something like You're from like 1970. That something's got to give opens with butterfly. Well, because she wrote yeah. that song. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, Nancy Myers was the the ghostwriter of uh, Crazy Town's entire debut album. She invented rock rap as a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was her idea, and she spent years trying to undo her. What if it mistake. turned out that Nancy Myers was like Jada Pinkett Smith, where she like secretly has this rap rock band <laughs> under an alias? Uh, right. You know about Jada Pinkett Smith's rap rock band? I do. Right? We've talked yeah. about it on this very podcast. <laughs> yeah. I think I can look it up. Yeah. Uh, do you remember? Because you remember the name. She wears like a, a dread wig and like Jenkos. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she really <laughs> like baggy Jenkos. She wears her Matrix costume. Yes. Wicked Wisdom. There Ooh. we go. And is it W I Z? No, it looks like it's just regular Wicked Wisdom. They did a show at Ozfest 2005. <laughs> that rules. Uh, yeah, Sharon Osbourne went to see them perform at a small nightclub, and she was blown away. Wow! So she was the one who hooked that up. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, she is separated from her husband. She moves into her father's moves house into that her she's dad's now inherited. Her really mom, made it her own. Her mom doesn't live there. No. Lives somewhere else, uh-huh. Lillian. Yeah. Uh, played by Candace Bergen. You see some shots of, like, 70s yeah. Candace Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. So, such a hottie. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. LeBron Bergen getting buckets from half court. She's trying to start an interior design business, I guess. Kind of. She's She makes a joke early on where she's like, huh, am I just one of those people who like any creative thing they do? Like, Well, she's supposed to be sort of a dilettante because right. when she's having dinner, birthday dinner with her friends, they're, she's like they're talking, talking about all these other careers. And right. it's like, well, that must be nice. Exactly. So yeah. she's just kind of an... But, right. She's Liberty gibbet? I don't know how you... Heidi, what's the word Liberty gibbet her? is yeah. probably the right word. <laughs> um, and she goes out for a drink with her friends. Uh-huh. Uh, and Wells real and, crunk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know yeah, how else yeah. to describe Jen Kirkman. <laughs> and Je- uh, yeah, so Jen Kirkman. I, there's a funny thing yeah. about Jen Kirkman because I, I I put on my notes all caps. Where is Jen Kirkman? Yeah, she doesn't come she back. She dis- Well, she, not only doesn't she not come back, she disappears from that scene. Yeah, because it's just her and Dolly Wells hanging out yeah. a- after a certain point. You're like, oh, I guess yeah. Jen Kirkman's character just had to go home or something. Or it's just like but Kirkman just like, only had one day available. Yeah, and- <laughs> that's what it feels She's a comedian, like and a funny one at that. I love Jen Kirkman. Like it is. Yeah, she's also one of those people where like if romantic comedies were still being made regularly she would be running the table on parts like this oh, like the absolutely. two scene over drinks like it would be her advice. and caitlin olsen just going right at, that's yeah. the thing they're like so many yeah. actors like that yeah. who like as we've been doing this miniseries realizing like fuck that's what this person would be doing if these movies still mm-hmm. got made right yeah, you know totally. they'd be the best friends in this they would be the boss in this like that's yeah. the zone that they're not getting cast in mm-hmm. i mean i've said this like a fucking thousand times but if i was jennifer lawrence I would go to my agents right now and say, like, I want to make a Nancy Myers movie. I want to use whatever remaining, like, movie star capital I have to try to make a straight down the middle, like, my best friend's wedding, like, career revival rom-com to remind everyone that I'm charming and get over, like, the press and the baggage and all of that. And maybe seem like I actually enjoy the work of acting. Right. And yeah. let Nancy, like, get a whole new batch of character actors mm-hmm. and on-the-rise movie stars to, to fill up the supporting cast. Steal get a bunch of people work. from TV. Right. Yeah. You know? They're out there. Yeah. So Alice hits it off with Harry, played by Pico Alexander. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is right. a mannequin that uh, was brought to life. 
Mm-hmm. A beautiful Absolutely. mannequin. Yes, a beautiful. Yes. I say that as a compliment. Yes, a mannequin from Brooks Brothers or The Gap or something yeah. wearing a nice sports coat. Where you're like, they really carved yeah. some detail into that mannequin. It's a specific <laughs> face. And I do, do we know, like, is there any real indication of what their connection is? Apart from that, he's super cute. He's super hot. She's super hot. Yeah. She's just kind of going for it, I guess. And uh, yeah, because they, they don't ever say like, oh, he he likes to date older women or anything like that. Like, it's just sort of. You see him indiscriminately hitting on everyone at the bar. Right. Because he's like right. hitting on, uh, 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 he's hitting on the bartender until Reese Weatherspoon comes over and then he immediately like shifts gears. Like, he just seems like a, you know, he's he's a big game hunter. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, you know? but like she just for whatever reason, maybe he could like smell like the birthday on her. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. right. She's turning yeah. forty. She's a little vulnerable. Oh, also, maybe she was paying, buying. What? Maybe she, maybe she and Dolly Wells were buying because it was they have money and the kids don't have. Although money. that would be right. a great detail for them to put in the movie. Right. That yeah. he's like, oh, we should get them to buy a string. Do you want? Do you know Pico Alexander's real name? I do, but I already forgot it. Alexander okay. Lukasz Jogala. Yeah. Right. He's like Polish. Yeah. His father yeah. is a DP, I believe. Uh okay. Uh, I I did a movie with him. He was in the, the Steve Coogan movie. Oh really? Um, Is he nice? Uh yeah, he's a nice guy. But but uh, uh like the whole camera crew on uh, on the Tick knew his dad or whatever. They'd always be like, "What's uh what's the Lagash kid's name again?" Oh, interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Pico. What's what's the yeah. what's the name he uses now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Pico is a childhood nickname, apparently. That's yes. Cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and he's. I mean, he's. Uh, I remember Bobby saying he didn't think that he was good in this movie, but like I think he's good. I think he's I think good. he he's, does he's, what he needs to he's do. In the casting lane. just doesn't he's make sense, lane. as we said. Yeah. Right. Like but, he's well, playing he, the wrong. He should, but right. like yeah. but as a cute boy, a cute yeah. nice boy, he's totally fine. Yeah, he's totally yeah. fine. Uh he's quite attractive too. He's I don't know if anyone he's got noticed. a good face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that yeah. was uh, a lot of your review was talking about that. <laughs> it's a good review. I remember yeah. when you posted that review, that one and the uh the Kingsman the Golden Circle oh, reviews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people shared those two reviews as like, "Hey, critics, this is how you talk about someone being attractive in a movie without being creepy." Well, except that I if a, if a straight guy did that, it would be creepy. Do you know what I mean? Wouldn't it? I think maybe. I think there, there might is be some way to do it. I don't a, know. You, I mean, I know what you mean. Obviously, I think there is a delicacy and a self awareness to the way you, the language you used around that, because it was the same time that, like, I forget what it was, but there was one of those fucking reviews that was like a, a David Edelson or something that was like circulating where oh, people were like, "Yeah, how yeah. are there four graphs on their legs?" Sure. You know, Wonder Every Woman was one of them. Right, this. yeah, right. And yeah. like, I think I did. Th- I think it was a little weird that Richard called him a th- a prime cut of veal. That was, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Look, I call him like I see him. <laughs> No, I, I, I. It was li- weird that you somehow got a wooga in yeah, there three right. different times. Right, you kept on talking about slathering him in garlic butter, and then I would have made a typo, and I was like, sorry, I should type with two hands. <laughs> <laughs> But you remember when Anthony Lane had the thing? What was it? What was the movie where Anthony Lane was like, oh, Incredibles 2, right? Where he's yeah. like, my popcorn went everywhere. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. About a fucking cartoon. Well, and then the other one oh, was boy. when he had past and future guest friend of the show, Lola Kirk on, and wrote his uh-huh. like horrible review of uh, Gemini. Yeah, but he, where he was obsessed with their clothes. That they weren't hot enough. And I, in my review, uh, not By knowing. By his definition, weren't hot enough. Not knowing that that review was coming. In my review, had written like a whole paragraph of how great her wardrobe was yeah. in Gemini. And uh, like my bosses were like, look, David did a good job. Not doing that, yes. that week. Yeah. I remember. I just feel like you in your in those reviews talk about like I'm not going to pretend I don't find these guys attractive, right. and that that isn't a factor like at, at the enjoyment of the movie. Well, right. it's, it's it's you weren't like ta- describing their glutes, you know? Right. Like, no, God, no. Right, you were I, saying like we have to admit that this is like an yeah. aesthetic aspect of films, and you can yeah. talk about it and not be creepy. I put the Amazing Spider-Man on my top ten of the year list that year, be, partly mostly because I loved Andrew Garfield, and I think he has great chemistry with Emma Stone. Uh, you Do know, you stand by that today? Now that I haven't. You, I haven't rewatched yeah. it. Yeah, because I feel not. like that was like an early like Garfield where it's like the pickings were slim. We didn't have right. a lot of sample size. And now, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But I know it's funny. I've listened back to episodes that I'm on, or like, or looked at the Reddit that you guys have, yeah. and they're like a lot of jokes about like. I mean, I I, I don't know if I'm stealing Karen's bit, but like, like you and your boys, boys. and I'm like, boys. Yeah. I just hope people don't think that I'm like <laughs> some like lech. But um, no, no. I mean, in fact, there are a couple people on the Reddit who have uh, talked about uh, their their plans to marry you. Oh, good. I've sent good. these links to yeah. you. No. R- Richard's turning full red yeah. now. Woo. Uh, Pico, Pico. So Pico, yeah, goes home. Yes. with um Alice and the other kids come. The other kids come. Everyone's partying, and it's interesting. So it's it's Nat that Wolf. That part's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> 
Griffin like wandered through the dimensional tunnel, but he got stuck in the montage. <laughs> he can't get I'm, out. I'm in the library from Interstellar. You're in the old just 70s. Playing this we're, song. we're gonna look. At, we're David and I are gonna watch the movie again at some point, and Griffin's, Griffin's gonna be in, in the old photos. <laughs> He's in Bergen's eye. Yeah. Ah, let him out. I'm trying to push the watch off the shelf, and the song is just playing in an endless loop. Uh, yeah. So they 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 they're gonna hook up. Well, yeah. Well, they're gonna have well, sexual one intercourse. Detail. They've What's... gotten kicked out of the Florida Project Motel. Oh, oh, that's right. By yeah. one of the three people of color in the film. Yes. By the most depressing instance of a, a, of writing yeah. in the movie. We have the guy yeah. who's like, get out, I want my rent. Yeah. Like, you know, and, like, and you're like, uh, oh, no, no money, no bed. Like, like that, that level right, of right. bullshit. Oh, right. God. But um, even the way they set this up, I mean, they have, she has a pretty good sort of like, uh, like tracking dolly shop with them as they're like walking through and Rodnitsky and Wolf are, are like, where are we going? Pico's like, well, figure oh, something yeah, out. Oh, yeah, through the parking lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But the idea is that in the background as the shot is like, like following them, you see uh, Nat Wolf who's like hitting on a girl and they have to pull him away to get him back into the action. And at that moment, I was like, Wait, and Pico Alexander isn't playing that character? Right. Yeah. Like, even before I understood what the three positions were, it just felt like, no, he should be the guy who's, like, constantly flirting with him. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway. Um, so they're the, gonna... the three boys have made Queens Boulevard. Which... Right. And they're homeless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they made a five-minute short that, as far as I can tell, is about, like, a, a huckster. It's like, like a, a black and white silent short about a pocket watch. Yeah, someone's uh, stealing a pocket watch. Right. And, it, and it features the second person of color in the movie. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The third is a pizza man. <laughs> it's weird because they keep on saying, like, the movie has to be in black and white. And then you see the film, and it looks sort of like a 16-millimeter student film, but in a time right. period where you know that they wouldn't have done that, it's, that they shot it on an it iPhone. literally is Queens stupid. Boulevard. Yes, it is. Yes. Queens yes. Boulevard. Yeah, yes. it is. Which is in black and white. Although it's set in, they say it's set in Brooklyn. It's Brooklyn Avenue. Uh, I, yeah. I just love that <laughs> until when you see the like five seconds of footage, yeah. everyone talks about the movie so much and you get no sense of what the movie is other than it's really arty. Yeah. Right. People love it and it's in black and white. The agents like, are always like, best thing I it, saw at Sundance. In the yeah. real world, wasn't like the, the uh, arty short that everyone was after that was in black and white full of boys, Don's Plum, which is a movie that everyone fucking like. Like right. it says it's a horrible movie that like they, they yeah. completely buried it. So right. it's like I, I feel like it's a weird choice to be like I think like a it's better like the analog. worst shorthand of like an arty right. movie, right? It's like that it has to be in black uh, and white. Do you know I what know. I think the analog of what the career trajectory she's picturing is? Yeah. It's the Wilson brothers and Wes Anderson doing Bottle Rocket. Where right. like that's right. their black and white sixteen millimeter short that was like eight minutes right. that's like charming and like you know they're the and actors it's also and the writers about, like, a small time crook or whatever right they're yeah. like a team that came together and yeah. were like on camera behind the camera writing all of that the movie screen in Texas right they it was say, stylish right. yeah it's in South by South yeah. by not Sunday right. right that's it right best thing you saw at South by and I immediately went mm-hmm. it's not that hard <laughs> but I think that's who she's sort of like analoging them to because it's also this idea of like these are three guys who want to be doing everything together like it's a package deal where it's always yep. going to be like writer director star yeah and the two of them are brothers Wolf yep. and uh, Pico and then Rudnitsky is just their neurotic friend yeah the Dorsey brothers uh-huh and then right it, there, but there's no George like, fraternal relationship between no, them because at all. because Rud- Rudnitsky adults. is much more uh, you know in this, you know, toward the center of things, where Nat Wolf's yes. character is just like off to the side, there right. to fight Michael Sheen. Right, I guess so. He doesn't have any purpose. Yeah, he's no. also arguably the most famous of the three. Yes, Not, kind of inarguably the most no. famous of the three actors. Though he suffers from the problem of people can't tell him but from his brother. Yeah, right. the other Wolf, Alex Wolf. Which one's in Hereditary? Alex, Alex. Wolf. Okay, Alex is the one who's a little darker because right. he yes. like. He was in Hereditary. He was in Patriots Day. Where it's like Nat Wolf was in yeah. uh, fucking Paper Hearts or whatever, right? But like then what confuses like, it? Paper yeah. Towns. Right. Yeah. What confuses it is that then Alex Wolf was also in Jumanji, which feels like it should oh, be a right. Nat Wolf. Part. Right. Yeah. And then Nat Wolf was in Death Note, which feels like it should be an Alex mm. Wolf part. So lately they've been mixing up. They're driving me crazy. And Rudnitsky had done one season on SNL, right? Yes. yes. And but the thing is, when he got hired, he was like. One of the those people where people went back and looked at old tweets and yes. old right stand up, like even he, before, and he had done like some really like racially charged humor about like USC being in the ghetto or whatever. Or, like, most you know, of his stand up is uh, if you watch the videos that I've seen when he got hired, I was like, who is this guy? He does a sure. lot of stand up about the size of his penis. Oh, okay. Interesting. Is it large? Small. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not talking at school here. This is 90 percent of his material. Uh, and then well, his, he just like gets up and he's like, my dick's so small. Uh, my dick I? is, uh, you know, it's uh, not the biggest. And then he'll go on about that for laughs. like six minutes. Everyone laughs. Cries. It's at the comedy store. And then he got on SNL. But um, I love the industry. Yes. 
Um, but the other thing is they found the offensive tweets, right? Yeah, right? He was someone who came out of nowhere. They almost fired him like before he even started on SNL. And right? then it was also a series of like year after year, there'd be all these people who were talked about as like really good character comedians and sketch actors who didn't get on and then they would just hire one male stand-up who didn't have sketch experience. Right. right. And it was like Davidson, Brooks Whelan, him. Um, I think there's maybe one other that I'm forgetting. But uh, then his first sketch on the show after all of this blowback from him going from like unknown 20-year-old to like SNL cast member. Maybe he's a little older. But he's like young. Yeah. Um, was the opening sketch of first episode, his first season – starts with him as Anderson Cooper moderating oh, a debate. Oh, God, that's right. That's and right. he does the sort of, like, most femme, prissy Anderson, Anderson Cooper impression. Anderson Cooper was a landmark low for yeah. SNL. Right, yeah. And everyone yeah. just immediately was like, oh, fuck this so hard. Yeah. Because it was like he had never seen Anderson Cooper before, and all yeah. he heard is it's a gay guy, and he played him like Sean Hayes. Yeah. Anyway, Anderson Cooper, like, yeah, it does not. He was fired yeah. But it's weird, but I, I, I bring like. that up because it's weird that, I mean, maybe it's a testament to his acting ability. I, he's charming in this. I think he's the best of the boys. Yeah. That's the thing is he's really good in this movie. Yeah, yeah and, and the other annoying. thing he, like, is he gets its wavelength really well. It was he's really good. it was a smaller role, but he's good in in set it up too. Like it feels yes, like is. this is actually what he's good at. I hope he's right. going to be good in set it up too. The sequel to set it up that yes. Netflix better make. <laughs> right, set it back up. Yeah. Set it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, Set it down. No, but Set that down. Do they have kids now? <laughs> the kid keeps picking up some antiques. I, I think throughout the entire cast, he's behind only Reese in terms of totally getting the wavelength and the vocabulary of like romantic comedy close-ups. Well, yeah. There's a very yeah. specific kind of like acting and physical energy and comic timing and how you sell a close-up and all that sort of shit. And he's like really in it. I mean, the way that these boys... Maybe I'm just speaking for myself because children yeah. terrify me. But like <laughs> the way the way that these boys interact with her children mm -hmm. in this very natural way, yes. is like kind of off putting. In in a, not 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 so off putting like Meryl Streep's adult children. And it's complicated. Who uh -huh. are like all ghouls that should be sent back to hell, right? But um, but there's a little bit something off about it. But Rudnitsky, like he's, he's the one who's more natural, it. right? You know, he has like whole, full scenes just with her. The, yes, when that wolf the like relays problems with the daughter, Siri Swisswing, you're like, okay, back the fuck up. Yeah, it's, you know? it's really yeah, why are you get in their business. And yeah. Rudnitsky, you actually like buy that he's like a good mentor to her. Yeah, even that just them in the car together when he's mm -hmm. struggling, like he really makes every scene partner in the movie look better when he's with them. Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe he's redeemed himself. Yeah. Right now. Um, anyway. Um, so they don't sleep together because, uh, Pico, Dick, no work. Uh, he also Dick, pukes. no worky, drunky, drunky. Pico yes, right. pukes. Yeah, Pico, pukey. Um, and, um, what else? And then they uh, move in. They move in. <laughs> <laughs> they wake up the next morning. Reese has shifted from, like, let's do this to, like, full on like uber mom like she's basically because like because when he, Pico's about to vomit she's like let me get you like a warm towel and he's like you're so maternal you should be a mother <laughs> yeah, yeah. wakes up she's been up for two hours she's already washed and ironed his shirt right she's like washed and ironed him and he's yeah. naked <laughs> he's, yeah it's fucking crazy and she's just like she's sort he's of covered in burns it's horrifying <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Everything must be ironed. He looks like Alice's Daniel Stern house. in Home Alone, where he's just got the hot iron <laughs> yeah, imprint. That is a, a image that's like seared into my brain. Is yep. the, the iron seared like a hot iron? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, right, and the boys are all still there, and she's kind of trying to make it clear, like, hey, like. You know, this is a mom's house. Right. Like, you know, you don't, guys, none of your partying. Okay. Right, because right. the daughters are like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. They Fairly. The, right. Yes. They're fair to say that. And then, of course, LeBron shows up. Why are you calling her LeBron? Because she gets buckets. <laughs> Candace so Bergen? She, so she was filming Book Club next door, and she goes, <laughs> just like, oh, hey, I'll pop yeah. in. Yeah. You saw Book Club? It's a movie full of three-pointers from, oh, from LeBron Bergen. Oh, she's remarkable in that movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah she's great. She I mean, buckets. Candace Bergen rules. Yeah. Um, she is perfect casting as a lady who was like a sex symbol in the seventies and yes. is now just an awesome old lady. Yeah. Which also Candace Bergen shows up a lot on Nancy Myers Instagram. I like the idea that Nancy Myers seemingly is very close and regularly hanging out with uh Candace. They're similar age. And They're both around seventy. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So she um, just needs to complete the book club quartet. Mm -hmm. Sure. She book needs club to make too? a Fonda movie. She book needs to make a movie. <laughs> book club. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of people going like, we should have a book club. Book club origins, Wolverine. <laughs> Sherlock book club. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, this is the thing where it's like, there's no other 
explanation. It's just that Candace Bergen shows up and is like, you should have the boys live here. You should give them a chance. Well, because when, right. when they first are there and the boys put together that it's the Kenny house because Rudnitsky yeah, wanders yeah, into Rudnitsky the room. Yeah, Rudnitsky wanders. Right. He's, oh he's so gosh. into a it. A camera? There's this loving close-up of the camera and you well, see his like, a gas face. they're a fucking picnic Right. And film he, he sees the Oscar. He comes out. They put it all together. Why yeah. does Pico Alexander think she looks so familiar? Oh, my God. I guess she's like the Jenna Rollins now. To his sure. Tessa Betty, yeah. right? Except yeah, she yes. didn't act yes. as much, but right, yeah. right. Yeah, smaller right. parts. She's but... in all his movies, right? Yes. Which is sort of said in this kind of backhand way, right? But she wasn't really an actress outside of that, right? And she's like, "Oh, you boys are so cute, Alice. Right. They live here now." Well, no, because first, <laughs> first she's very dismissive. Yeah. They're like, you know, we're filmmakers too, and she's like, "Kids, it's L.A. Everyone's a filmmaker." Right, that's right. true. That's like, true. Fuck that's off. Right, right. Then right, Reese right, is like, right, "I gotta take." She the kids. also has a stogie in her mouth. <laughs> And she's wearing a, a pair of suspenders right, she's a, and she keeps snapping she aggressively. Keeps, yeah. She keeps hitting on Joan Crawford. Yeah. She hits her on her comm and she says, prepare the standard rich and famous contract for Kermit the Frog and friends. <laughs> and then, right, she watches their movie is the idea, right? The well, short. Okay, what happens is Reese takes the kids to school. She's like, I can't even deal with this. Right, when right, she's right, in the right. car, she realizes the daughter has left her book report at home, sure. drops them off. Uh, it's a reason for her to go straight back home as fast as she can. And in those 30 minutes, yeah. the boys have so thoroughly charmed Candace Bergen right. and so sold in their abilities that she's like, I think these kids got it. Don't you want to be the woman who said they were sleeping on my couch? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is like weird. Weird. Like if fucking Damien Chazelle had rolled up to my house yeah. eight years ago. And even if I thought he was talented, I would have been like, you got to sleep on this couch. So I got those bragging rights forever that you were on this very couch. Like on the criterion of Bottle Rocket, there's like a whole long documentary about like the Wilsons and Andersons sure. when James L. Brooks and Polly Platt discovered them and were trying to get them to write the screenplay. Like in the position these boys are in. Right. And they're talking about like, yeah, they were like sleeping on our couches. They would like stay out every night. Like we couldn't get them to sit down and write the thing. And they talk about it like this is. Brooks is talking about this. His producing partner is talking about this. And, like, with pride about the fact that it turned out well. But they're like, it was so fucking annoying that we couldn't get these boys to, like, behave. Like, no one wants to be, like, you know, it's not worth it right, for the bragging right. right to be, like, but I have four more children now. Yeah. We're in Dimension X. We're in Dimension X. So these boys mm-hmm. right. are nice. Yes. Well, so- there is a funny, weird, janky moment when Nat Wolf is, like, getting a sweater or something and like oh, weed and then falls his, out yeah, yeah yeah and she's like you know i know, you know last night aside like right. this is i know like you're an, all grown men with lives and agency yeah, yes. but, right. and, and agents but but she's like you know and this is not that this is not a party house it's this right. kind of house but then she says something that i think is nice she's like let's just try not to cramp each other's styles sure so she's not yes. saying like you can't drink or smoke weed or no. whatever when right. you're here she's just saying like let's you know yeah, you don't, cool. don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, right. right. So I think it's a nice little touch. Right, and right. then what? Why and then does... she goes back to her bedroom and smokes a fat blunt. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so the subtext of this movie is that she has a heroin problem. <laughs> no, but she's I'll... definitely tweaking throughout <laughs> yeah. this movie. Yeah. I don't know what's Almost immediately it. after her saying, "Like, so let's just live our separate lives and not right. encroach." By the way, Ranitsky, can you take my daughter to her guitar rehearsal? <laughs> And also, she's got the iron in her hand, and she's approaching Pico Alexander with a weird <laughs> do, glint do, in her do, eye. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, right. Ranitsky right away is drafted into, like, it's one of those things where she's like, oh, no, she has to go, and I have no contingency for this. Like, yeah. who will drive my daughter? Right, right. Where it's like, yeah, this has never happened You're before like in worth anyone's life. millions of dollars. <laughs> yes, right. Because she's got to go see Lake Bell, I guess. Right. So this is the oh, weirdest part yeah. of the movie is she's now decided that she's an interior decorator. The right. job she gets is Lake Bell, who's a socialite, they say. I guess so just a rich person, like an annoying rich airhead. Right. Yeah, she I says don't know. socialite, but yeah. Right. And I, Reese I, puts I, together like this whole fucking lookbook. Yeah. Yeah. And and Lake Bell, I think, is great in this. Yeah, sure. She's, she's funny. Kind of Lake doing Bell's it so funny. from a different movie that's sort of, yes. you know, like skewering Los Angeles, whereas the rest of the movie is like revering Los <laughs> right, Angeles. Right. <laughs> it, she's super yeah. heightened. And she's like, from like a, and it's complicated, let's say. <laughs> I mean, if almost you, like if the Lake Bell Lake, character. Yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> if you're Lake Bell and you get handed the script, you're like, oh, I get this right. This yeah, is just a, a, a nasty rich person. Sure. Right. I can do this in two, two days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fine. And then, right. And you're thinking like, oh, the Lake Bell is going to play into stuff. Like, it's going to, no. No, it's no. well. There's a drunken like, confrontation, right, but, it, but even that is like pretty, whatever. And oh, yeah. and it was when she's on a date with the guy from 
Uh, high maintenance. Yeah. What's his name? Ben Sinclair? He's yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, what, what is But also, name? that's another janky thing where you're like, what the fuck is Ben Sinclair doing in, this, right. in a Nancy Myers movie? Right. He's funny. What's the line he says at the beginning? And he goes, and never found my brother. So yeah, that's why I don't like boats. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They they <laughs> enter in in media res with a really funny dark yeah. line yeah. like that to show how badly the date's going. But, but like, well, I like that he's not like yeah, he's an right. asshole. That he's just like, just like who the a weird fuck is this guy? Yeah. Right? And it's just I I just the plot the Lake Bell plot seems to be like it shouldn't work. Pain in the ass. Because <laughs> can we go over this Lake totally. Bell thing? So she thinks she's getting hired to be an interior designer. She gets there. turns out she's already hired someone else to do some of the work. They had yeah. a falling out. So now she wants her to just be the person who receives the packages yes, exactly. that right. the other woman ordered. But then very quickly it becomes a personal assistant job where it's like, can you give my daughter a bath? Right. Right. And then she shows up one day and the actual interior designer is there. Yeah. Right. And apparently, like Belle said, this new woman creeps me out. This woman I haven't let do any interior design. Can you please come back with a raise? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and then and then Ray Reese yells at her drunkenly. Right. That's right. it. That's yeah, the that's whole. The whole right. and, yeah. and 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 the, yeah, like the point is like work so, sure is annoying. Yeah, yeah. It works at, like, like don't there, be an interior designer her, where yeah. you could just do nothing. I raise, guess raise some boys. Later in the movie we see her she has some sort of image mood board. She's she's working on some other new project, I uh-huh. guess it's implied, but like right. there's really nothing about like the, the the tagline starting over isn't for beginners. What does she start over? It's just because she that she moved from she New moved. York to Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 That's it. So. Yeah. That's literally it. Uh, right. Uh, well, yeah. She and, wants to be an interior designer. Right. And her <laughs> website was really bad at the beginning of the movie because it had a whole paragraph about how depressed she is. Right. But then right. Alex Wolf made her a new uh, web or Nat, Nat Wolf. Wolf. No, uh, no. Alex made the oh, website. <laughs> right. You're right. You're Nat, right yeah. Nat Wolf made her website on Wix. Did you see the prominent Wix stamping? I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the other aspect of this movie is the Michael Sheen thing. Yeah. So we're all lazing around. The boys are being nice. Yeah. They're nice, big, and special boys. And the boys... They're have, all dressed very well. They're yeah. dressed nicely. They wear nice sports jackets. Mm-hmm. And they have their own little producer subplot that we'll get to in a second. Yes. <laughs> um, where they're hanging out with Jason Blum, I guess. Yeah, he's supposed to be Jason Blum, right? I mean, I don't know who else Does Jason Blum, Blum live in like a, you know, Rococo mansion on the... Yeah. In Malibu? I live with him. Oh, right. So, yeah. right. If you've ever been to my house, you've been to Jason Blum's house. Um... Yeah, Jason Bum played by Reed Scott. Uh huh. Which is again, it, it like there. It's another one where it's like, ha, Hollywood phonies, right? And you're like, oh, what, is this going to be important? No, no, no. no. Just taking a jab well, at him, and also like, <laughs> oh, he's taking a bite. <laughs> yeah, guys, I only make three types of movies: female centric comedies. It's like, real. This guy makes female centric really? comedies. Yeah, that mm. that seems incongruous with everything else he's developed to be. Mm. Is that supposed to be a jab at him producing the Gem and the Holograms movie? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um. But uh, yeah, Michael Sheen, who's got luscious fucking hair. He looks oh, so the hair good in his movie. His hair and Pico's hair, it's yeah. just like, this is yeah. quite a thing. And Sheen's yeah. beard is really good, too. He's got some really gorgeous white streaks. He looks like a lion. I mean, he does. He's just like... <laughs> this was his audition to play Mufasa. <laughs> right. Is his successful just... audition. Yes. <laughs> Right. He's doing right. it up in, in Bristol in the UK. Well, James Earl yeah. Jones is is doing the voice for the Favreau movie, but Mike, uh, Michael Shan, Sheen is going to be the on yes. screen. He's the only non CG yes. character. Right. They're just pointing the camera right at him. Right. Um, yeah, I don't I know. I would what. love it if you went to see The Lion King and just like unannounced Michael Sheen. Was- <laughs> 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 um, he's a music producer. Uh-huh. He's looking for the next Sam Smith. He's scouring the fucking globe looking yeah. for the next Sam Smith. Particularly the Miami. Yes, yeah. Miami. Uh, I guess he's a jerk. Mm-hmm. And he keeps calling being like, oh, I just miss you guys or whatever. He wants the next Sam Smith because we need a second openly gay person to win an Oscar. Because remember, Sam Smith was the first. Right. Oh, what a milestone <laughs> for everyone. No, but the Michael Sheen conversations are all like this. I, I, I miss you guys. I wish I could be there. You can be here. No, I wish I could. I can't. <laughs> right. That's and then like the cycle over. He Albert. catches wind, I guess, that like three grown men are living at his daughter's house. Right. One who builds a house out of straw. <laughs> one who builds a house out of brick. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and so he comes a running. Yeah. yeah. He just sort of shows up. Yeah. And then tries to like sort of alpha them. Yeah. And kind of kind of fairly is like, why didn't you mention right. that there, that there are, are three men. like sexual beings living in the guest house? But he keeps but on like sort of my daughters. He keeps big dogging them with he like does. the like I wouldn't have understood it at your age either. Yeah. Right. I do love like th- this is Michael Michael Sheen has like uh, quite a reputation for uh running through uh the yeah. actresses of Hollywood. Uh-huh. Yep. 
And I feel like very often the parts he is cast to play are very incongruous with what you hear about Michael Sheen's. Right, because Michael Sheen is usually cast as like the elfin MC of the weird club like a that a hero vampire. goes through. Right, yeah. Right, or, or like the fucking, pretentious like professor. Right, or, or a robot bartender. Right, and then you're like, but he's. Oh, yes. oh speaking oh, of uh, Jennifer right. Lawrence. Creepy right. pasta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but then you, like, read, and then like, you read about it, right? And it's like, like, uh, he, like everyone on Masters of Sex was falling in love with him yeah. and he was like discarding them like fucking sticks of gum michael sheen's the warren <laughs> Beatty of our time <laughs> like truly like, like that guy is five two i just pulled out my headphones yeah. again but i will say this i've heard him on a couple podcasts where you're just like jesus fucking christ this guy is charming like i yeah, like no, him I a lot know. as an actor and he's a great i heard him on like comedy bang bang or something and i was like yeah, he's, I well he's really funny him. and you think about like how he has a very amicable relationship with the mother of his daughter. Yeah, he's always Kate got Beckinsale. Right. He's always got and nice Kate Beckinsale's relationships. really funny on Instagram. So yes. she's so I feel like there's just like this like secret world of of famous actors who are like funny really, really cool and funny. He's with Kate Beckinsale. They're not married, but they're together. They have a child. Well they're not I don't think they're even together anymore. Yeah. He's doing no, no, the no, timeline. No, what I'm saying, oh, this oh, is the timeline because oh, I find this fascinating. Oh. Sheen and Beckinsale are maybe kind of common law, right? right but right. not officially married. They both get cast in Underworld. Right. Kate Beckinsale leaves him for Len Wiseman, director right. of Underworld. Michael Sheen continues to do the Underworld mm-hmm. franchise. Right. It shows it's you a good no, role. No sense of competition yeah. in that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Werewolves? <laughs> Vampires? Yes. Which right. one is he the king of? I, I think he's, uh, uh, the his Lycans? character's name is Ray's, uh, leader of the Lycans. <laughs> I've never seen an Sarah Underworld. Silverman has said in yeah. interviews, like, oh, yeah, we broke up because he moved back to uh, uh, London after his daughter went to college. Um, but we still like sleep together when he's in LA, and I'm like, yeah. that's so open and right. honest and like re- real. I don't Rachel know. McAdams, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, uh, one of the other Masters of Sex stars, uh, Caitlin Fitzgerald, I think her name is, yeah, uh, who's great, and, and yeah. who we've covered in this miniseries is one of the weird alien children, and it's complicated. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, another uh, person who would be in every Nancy movie if Nancy was regularly making movies. I don't know. There was also that thing, remember recently, where it was like, Michael Sheen, I'm retiring from acting, was like an article. And then when you clicked on the article, he was like, I'm not retiring from acting yeah. or anything <laughs> like that. I'm just not going to make a movie for a year. Right. <laughs> or something. Was, he was like, I want to focus on politics. Yeah, right. Right. He he's was a, like freaked out post-Brexit. Yeah, he's an amazing, amazing actor. I love Michael Sheen in like serious stage plays. And then it's yeah. stuff like this. It's like, like oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah sure. right. It, Here he the is. other thing that's fascinating about him is he was one of those guys who is stuck in that zone where it's like he's always the supporting performance against the person who gets the Oscar nomination or yeah, the sure. win. Frost Nixon. You know, the queen. The queen, which he's um, it's so good in. Yeah. I love him in that movie. That was the thing. He, he plays he, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> in England, he was this stage actor. Do you actor. think anyone's going to be talking about that movie in December no. when this airs? No, no one no, is going to know what you're referencing. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> no one will know. Um, you know, in England, yeah, he was this like... Uh, a celebrated stage actor who would do all these like really out there performances. And then he became the guy who was great at playing Tony Blair. Yeah. Right? He played Tony yeah. Blair like right. four times. Cause right. the resemblance is there. For it sure, is. And know. he just nailed the sort of smarm and like, yeah. you know, the like weird, like charm, like versus smarm thing. Well, and then it was, what's his name decided he keep, uh, kept Peter on, Morgan. right. Peter Morgan. Wanted to continue yeah. making Blair films. So and it's then, like, he got a little franchise. Right. And then right. Morgan's like, I'm going to do a David Frost movie. Can you like kind of do your Blair again? Like, right. you know, except even smarmier, like, you know, Michael Sheen became his avatar. Right, but he's that's, so good in yeah. the Damned United too, which is another Peter like, Morgan. Two thousand three, he's in Underworld, so that starts to put him in like the rotation for doing those sort of like he's in the genre too, things. Right, right. right, he's in the Twilights. Uh, he's in Blood Diamond, which is another one where like the lead then gets Gunner nominated. Film. He was also supposed to play Blair uh, in Gossip Girl. That's right, of course. <laughs> oh, he would have been great. Do you know, Leighton Meester was born in prison. I did know that. Yeah, I love that fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was really good on Thirty Rock. Yeah, he's Wesley Snipes. Right. If you looked Wesley Snipes up in the dictionary, you would think that a picture of me would be. Like, that is so <laughs> yeah, funny. such a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love but that. But he I mean, love that. he's in admission, pretty much playing the exact same part as this. Yeah. Um, and he's been in a thousand movies. Yes. He's a really fucking good actor. Um, and he did 46 episodes of Masters of Sex. He mastered it. And now no yep. one ever has to try sex again. The end is him just going, yep. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a diploma here. and he yeah. puts it on his wall. <laughs> yeah. I'm a master. Do you know that he reprised his character as Dr. William Masters in an episode of The Simpsons last year? No. In what universe has The, the Simpsons, Simpsons gone like, from we like— We really need a Masters of Sex joke. Yeah, we do a crossover with The X-Files. <laughs> and then 20 years later, you're like, I don't know, crossover with Masters of Sex? <laughs> What's left? 
David, do you feel? I'm sorry to just interrupt the, the flow of the episode here. Sorry, very uh, unusual, Dickie Lawson. Go ahead. Do you feel like the the temperature in here changed a little bit? Like the sort of ambiance just changed? I don't know. Up or down? Like, it feels like it just got kind of like dark and gritty in here. Like this, this isn't my grandfather's podcast recording studio. Oh my god! Pew! Someone just sent a, an arrow through the doorbell. They're not even bothering to ring the doorbell. Pew! The door's cracked open. Oh my god! It's hot, edgy millennial Taryn Egerton Robin Hood. <laughs> Oh boy, every generation gets their Robin Hood and we've gotten ours and it's like Guy Ritchie Robin Hood but not even directed by Guy Ritchie. This isn't your grandpa's ad read. Hello, hello boys. Hello. <laughs> I'm talking to him. Yeah. Uh, you speak my language, it's almost like you grew up in England. Oh, uh, sources say. Yeah, he did. Okay, yeah. Wait, the bit's retired, the bit's retired, let's get to the ad read, please. All right, uh, what are you here for today, Mr. Hood? I'm here to put a new twist on an old story. Oh, so like you're kind of not dissimilar from this investing app called Robinhood that lets you buy and sell stocks and ETFs and options and cryptos commission free. Oh, I was going to say this sounded like my grandfather's stock service. No, but then once you no, got to the commission, no. Part, they're trying to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. And they're non-intimidating so that newcomers can invest for the first time with true confidence. Oh, it sounds kind of edgy and gritty. It's simple and intuitive. It's a very clear design. The data is presented He's in a really easy to digest way. Yeah. I use the app every day. It's uh, set up with my face ID, which is very uh, cutting edge. What if you have um, uh, face tattoos like uh, my best friend Little John played in a very sexy, edgy performance by Sexy Academy Award winner Jamie Foxx? I, he is Will it still sexy. recognize? I think so. I think uh, the only difference is that your phone might give you a little wink. As it uh, unlocks, because you're so uh, good looking. Would it be my grandfather's wink? Uh, no, very much not your grandfather. Not like a wink where they hand you like a word that was original. No, nah, they hand you like a crack pipe. <laughs> Wait a second. It's dark and edgy. Uh, no, come on. The Robin Hood app has uh, no commission fees. Other brokerages charge like up to $10 for every trade. Robin Hood doesn't charge commission fees. You can trade stocks. You can keep all of your profits. It's got easy to understand charts, market data. You can place a trade in just like four taps. He's taking out his iPad and, and he's going on a Twitter rant about how Bernie would have won. Well, while he's doing that, let me tell you that Robinhood also helps you learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. It helps you discover new stocks and track favorite companies with a personalized news feed. And you can customize your notifications so you can see when's the right moment to invest. Is something dropping? Is something rising? You know, David, I think I like this Robin Hood, this service more than I like edgy, sexy, Taron yeah, Egerton, Robin Hood, because I, that feels a little performative, but this just feels like getting the job done. It's not doing anything just for show. You know what I'm saying? It's, you're right. It, it's clean and simple. This is trying a little too hard. Way too hard. And Robin Hood are giving listeners a free stock like Apple or Ford or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. So you can sign up at check dot robinhood.com that's check.robinhood.com to get a free stock I'm like an apple i want to uh promote that i also have a, a, a special offer going on for my new picture robin hood oh boy uh, for only 34 dollars a ticket you can see it in 40x well that's not a deal that's like it's like highway robbery you're you're robbing from the poor oh boy and giving to the executives at Lionsgate. <laughs> i don't know how much he's gonna rob but yeah Okay. Well, I I think uh, you know you can by all means leave the studio, turn the lights back on, please up the thermometer again, and uh, uh, you know just maybe try Robinhood.com because you might take a little bit of a financial bath in your opening weekend. Yeah, check out Robinhood.com. Yeah. So long, fellows. Sorry about that, Richard. <laughs> Um, oh, so that was exciting. I wish I wish I could say that we're barely into the movie, but we're mostly done, with, we're the done with, with the movie because the movie, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the movie just sort of is like, hey. yeah. like <laughs> Michael Sheen of, shows up. Yeah. He's like, oh, we should get back together. She's like, okay. And then they just do like a time pass thing where like right. all well, that in, punches you know, him in the face. Well, they get, yeah, they get in a fight for some, for Pico, a silly reason. Pico stands Reese up. So, yeah. so she's, she's out on their little flirtation before right. it even began. Right. And so she gives Michael Sheen a shop, and then she gives up on that right away. Yeah. Right. She sends them both out. Then you have a montage. She of sends everyone, everyone out. Winning. But, but Michael Sheen decides to move to LA. He actually is going to do it. Yeah. Nat Wolf books the pilot. Yeah. We Nat see Wolf him walking. He's in like a hospital show right. or something. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rudnitsky he starts. He says it's a lead. Like he's like very casually, like, actually, it's a lead part. They want me to test, which is like, 
that was, is not how casual you would be about that happening if you just moved to but, LA. But yeah. Pico Alexander is like, how could you? When right, we right. want to make our black and white pocket watch movie. <laughs> right. He's like, furious that Rudnitsky is rewriting a horror film. Right, right. right. Rudnitsky's doing like, in, you know, right. bedroom, like a man with knife comes. Right. And Pico reads that and he's like, but what about the pocket watch? But it is like, if you're a struggling actor, you know, or like an aspiring actor and you get to test for a network show, that's like your fucking bar mitzvah, your first communion. It's right. like, I'm doing something thing right and he's just like i don't know i kind of think i should do it right <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah i don't know um and uh i get Renitsky has the relationship with the daughter we need that to she wants off. to be a writer right and she's he gonna do a talent the show the little the, the emotional the younger daughter animal. doesn't have anything she's just, she just says like profound things oh reese right. there's one scene where reese makes this like it's it's like a i think michael sheen is there by then and she's just like making breakfast and it's like literally like Heaps of cro- croissant <laughs> butter in a in a in like a clay earthen pot, <laughs> like huge thing of eggs and hash browns and a huge arranged tray of fruit. I mean, it's well, really hysterical. Richard, you speak of that. This feels like a great moment to transition to a regular segment for the last time that we oh, do right. here on did our she, Nancy she Myers series. Yes, she did. Right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, she's going to do one now. Yes, sorry. because we're cutting live over to our special correspondent, longtime sister Romley Newman, with Romley's Kitchen Corner. And here is your host, Miss Romilly Newman. She's in her kitchen. Today I'm in a kitchen and I'm going to talk about the kitchen home again, which is not my favorite kitchen. And the funny thing is if this was kitchen was in any other movie, I'd say, well, it's a really nice kitchen. But you can't help but watch it and just think this is a Nancy Myers kitchen on a really low budget. They have all the same fixings, all the same stylistic choices, but everything just looks a little bit less nice. Uh, you know, they couldn't get the Viking. They, they couldn't get the wolf stove. You know, the fridge is not a sub-zero. And it's still an incredibly nice kitchen, but it's not an Anthony Myers kitchen. Thank you, Romley, for your service. We appreciate it. I uh don't know what circumstances we'd ever uh, bring back Romley's Kitchen Corner, but yeah, uh, maybe. Well, you're going to do burnt. that burnt. We are going to do a full miniseries on burnt. Burtcast! Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go back to the Star Wars format and just do burnt every week. Good. You could do no, no reservations. I don't think yeah. we could do a full episode on burnt I without falling asleep. Yeah. Like, we would oh, we would try, and we would just be like, and then... Uh, <laughs> it would be like an ASMR episode, because we'd just trail off. Burn. You'd perk up at the Uma Thurman part. Yeah. 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 She should do a Nancy Myers movie. Every actress of the '90s should do a Nancy. Well, Myers movie. she yeah. tried to in with Prime, which is not right. a Nancy Myers movie, no, but no. was That's, sort of styled. Yes, yes. She has the worst role in that kind of. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? October ben Road. Is that his name? No, that's oh oh the actor. Yeah. Well, he was uh, How to Make It in America, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And he he was on tick. season one of The Tick. Oh, he was. He's one of my favorite characters. On he the is show. very funny in it. He was only in like two episodes, right? At Maybe three. three yeah. Derek. He plays the uh, the villain's ex husband who still lives with her. Because Brian they don't Greenberg. Want to split her. He's That's great. His, yeah, he's he's excellent, and he's a nice guy. Uh, this is the uh, episode where I say that handsome men are nice. <laughs> well, that's the I mean, that's the movie. Yeah, that is the movie because that's what happens. Oh, well, right. Okay, so then the boys have their big meeting with the producer, right? Who's a jerk? <laughs> I don't remember though what happens at the meeting. It's Nothing. like this is the weird thing. Was like they have the meetings with Blum, and they're right. like, "What a jerk." And then Blum is just the entree to this sort of... He's got a note. It just says Channing. <laughs> Blum 2, right? Like right. the older Blum? Like yeah. Blum Hyper Senior? Blum. <laughs> oh, they have the meeting and they, they decide to run away to go to the daughter's thing. Is that what Well, happened? that's yeah. the final meeting, right? right? Where the right. guy's like... And again, it's this thing where Hallie is just doing this like insanely broad Hollywood spoof sketch. Right. Because right. that's what the Lake Bell scene is. Yes. That's what the first Reed Scott scene is. That's what this scene is where he's like, I love the script, but like what if they're like doing a heist of like a casino right like know. suddenly it's bowfinger right, right but are like these are these meetings that she's had maybe or is this just like her mom but like when's the last time nancy myers had a meeting like that ever i mean she doesn't need to i mean maybe the intern nancy was myers and jason blum have been circling a hellraiser remake we <laughs> yeah. should we should talk about that's why he jason blum was so right. cagey when people ask him about female directors it's because he's been trying to get her take yeah. on pinhead forever she goes what if we lose the pins <laughs> Just head. <laughs> um, yeah, that scene, the idea of that scene, right, is just that 
Pico finally is like, you know what? The Pocket Watch movie can wait. We've got to get to the talent show. Well, because we've established that Pico doesn't usually know to do the right thing. Right. But He's a bit case, of a fuck up. This isn't the right I thing guess. for him. It's only for Rudnitsky. The other two being there kind of doesn't matter that much. Well, but Matt Wolf is there because he's like going to be the lead of Pocket Watch. Right. I'm just calling it that. Right, and he's, and, and and he's the, pocket full of watch. He's also there as security in case Michael Sheen also shows up to the <laughs> yeah, play. Right, he'll pop right. him in the nose. <laughs> yeah. uh, he'll pocket watch him in the nose. Right. And then the producer does that thing where he's like, yeah, I'm thinking some big star. And Reed Scott's like, ah, no, we were going to put Nat Wolf in it. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, you can be in it. Yeah, we'll I find am a part Brooklyn for you. Avenue. <laughs> Oh, oh, outrageous! Nice <laughs> and then yeah, they go to the talent show, yeah. and John Ranitsky falls in love with uh, the daughter's teacher. Yeah. Uh, on the way to the stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They have yeah. a meet cute that begins at yeah. the entrance to the school and ends with them on the stage. Yeah, and that guy needed a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was having so much trouble being handsome and cast in things. Yeah. God, what a movie. <laughs> I don't know. Like, is there anything I found else? It really pleasant. Then I don't at the know end, yet. they gather, right? Like, is there a oh, further? And then, and then the Carol King song plays right. home again, which like. D- 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 so her mother, Nancy, except for Griffin, a- which he's just hearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like one of those people who like kills himself after like having hiccups for three years because like <laughs> I'm I'm so <laughs> you're gonna get your, like, lost this, in the woods and that's your all version you're here. of tinnitus. <laughs> I'm so far down the levels of the Assumption uh, elevator that for me it sounds like Le'Veon Rose. <laughs> 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 This movie, as we already stated, is set in the city that Leo and Marion built in Inception. Right. Mm-hmm. They lived a whole lifetime together. Yes. Ken Watanabe's there getting old. <laughs> Everyone is waiting for a train. Yeah. And um, This is a movie about uh, what It just ends with them all trains. gathering yeah. and being like, how crazy. Here we are. And Nancy, Nancy Byers was like, okay, I will EP this movie and get this movie made for you, but you have to name it after a Carol King song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have to name like, it after a Carol King song and have an incongruous ending yeah. scene where everyone's at dinner. Yeah. yeah. Which is how most of her movies oh, end. Oh, and, and I like that the daughters play. <laughs> yes. The set is that outdoor dining area yes. right, of their backyard. And there's yes. the joke at the end where the daughter's like, that was kind of based on like our yeah. lives. And, and it's like, so wait, there was a look, like, there was like a fourth grade play that was right. about like fucking <laughs> divorce my and- mom tried to bag this hottie <laughs> didn't try did. his dick didn't work and then they figured it out right um i mean it feels like uh you know she she's setting up a future something's got to give you, you think know? you think pico's gonna get with reese eventually no oh i guess kind of place in that real she's, life yeah that she's hallie rico yeah but that character's hell. Right, yes. Oh, duh. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, like, I don't know. Like, I didn't realize. Um, uh, do you think Michael Sheen's going to find the next Sam Smith? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> unquestionably. In real yeah, life? It's yeah. Nat Wolf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sam um, Smith, he's like at a chalkboard, Sam Smith, Nat no, Wolf. Where do Sam you Smith, find Nat Wolf? The next, you find the next Sam Smith like at like wearing like a big frilly bonnet at the maternity ward or something because he's sort of like a little Lord Fauntleroy. Like. <laughs> So, so Netflix, singing a song plaintively to his sick mother, like, yeah. oh god. Netflix has like said how uh, successful uh, to all the boys I loved and set it up were for them, right? Right, that their there was summer a, like, of love, they call it. Right, they're two of their most watched films, and certainly less expensive than a lot of the big films they've had to buy, like Bright. You know, right? If I were them, I'd just be like, get get Hallie Myershire in here and let her make one of these every year, every oh, other absolutely. year. Absolutely, sure. You know, because Nancy needs like eighty million dollars. Right. Nancy to make a can't movie. do it cheap. No, she can't. But like, let Hallie make a bunch of these. Sure, she had a script. I want to find the name of it. Have you heard about this? No, that Nancy was going to direct. Oh, right. Called yes, called the Chelsea. Yes. Oh, about the Chelsea Hotel. I don't know. Yeah, and then it, they fell apart. Right. So but that mean, was before Home Again. Yes. I think Nancy was going to. The, thing about, was gonna the thing about it is that, like, we're you know joking about the sort of creepy homage to her mother, but like the movie's not badly made. It's, no, I mean it. 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 it, it I mean it, the, the pacing is a little fast, but like it. It looks great. The performances are good. I also it's, like and, the idea that her mother and father were on set every day. That it really feels like it was a family project. Yeah, like yeah. what? That's like, fine. So like, yeah. I would happily see another movie of her. I mean, I think there are certain things that. Could be improved upon in terms of for a first film. Like this is better than most first romantic comedies. You know, like there's no reason that the one of the boys couldn't like. They don't have to all be white, for example. Sure. Have you seen any Nancy Myers? (laughs) Well, yes. Okay. If you're going to make us an homage, that you know, but you know, I don't know. I I think that like the tendency with this movie is to just for people to kind of like just be like oh it's terrible and it's, no no it's this very weird but watchable yeah, yeah very watchable as griffin says it's my third time seeing it charming. charming and then also right just like odd in a way where you're yeah. like you think about it 
Yeah, it's well, not disposable. I, I said exactly. it in my review. It's like you could study this thing in psych class for like a year. Yeah. Like it's just very interesting. Which is like my favorite kind of movies. Yeah. These movies that just have their own weird sort of internal logic. They do feel like a broadcast from an alternate dimension. Mm -hmm. And you're just trying to parse out what the like. So if this, then what? <laughs> right. Rules right. of the right. world. Right. You know? Um, I mean, we should play the box office game. But yeah, is there anything else? You wanted to um, say I'm, I'm looking yes. at my note. Where is Jen Kirkman? <laughs> right. Um, she got unbrigadooned. I got to give you credit because she since, got there, since there was a nine to be quotes page, the quote I used was one that you transcribed uh, verbatim. So I had something to read off. Well, because we are um, three handsome guys hanging around, or three adorable guys, excuse me, hanging around. So is that such yeah. a Four thing? adorable guys. Ben Four. watched this movie no, too. I was going to say oh, Ben is our right. Reese Witherspoon. And we're the three cute, big, special boys. <laughs> um, there's a scene where they take their shirts off and go swimming. Oh, yeah, uh, in the beach. Yeah. And, and and Nat Wolf yells Attica, Attica, because, you know, 20-something year old boys in 2017 are always referencing uh, that Dog Day Afternoon. Dog Day uh -huh. Afternoon. Um, it's boys who were born after Independence Day came out. Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah, I think that's that's all I had. I mean, I, I thought the movie was insane. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I didn't hate it. I felt like, again, yeah, this is like another reality, another mm -hmm. dimension mm -hmm. of the world. I, as someone from New Jersey, kind of a lower class kind of citizen in the world, let's say. Sure. You grew up in a trauma film. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I <laughs> went to high school with Toxic Avenger. <laughs> right. right. So right. Um, if you went home again, it would be home again to the furnace. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. The reason uh, Toxic Avenger carried a mop was because he worked as a janitor at your high school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I just felt like it was like... The culture uh -huh. that I don't participate with at all. Yep. And look, I mean, that is, I will say, the reason why I think I always had hang-ups with Nancy is, like, I don't like the idea of watching movies about these people. Right. You know, because yeah. I also, like, am, am frustrated if I I'm at a it. restaurant seated next to people like no, this. I love it. I want to know all And I have to hear them talk. This yes. movie is the nice family I saw at the mall when I... Was, was trying to kidnap off. their children. Yeah, right. trying to kidnap their children or shoplift something. Right. And I would be like, you know, sort of like, oh my God, it's gross. But really inside, I'm like, oh, this seems nice. And like, I wish I had a nice family. Well, yeah. And the way that they, that, that Nancy yeah. Myers and Hallie Myers talk about divorce is from this like insanely privileged thing where divorce is this kind of like, neurotic moment it's not yes. like oh what like we're financially we're destroyed and right. like the kid you know how are we going to get the kids back and forth it's more just this kind of like social embarrassment or something yeah. it's 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 really interesting right, but tuesdays are my yoga group right, like right. that yeah, kind like, of like <laughs> right i love it oh and um did you guys notice that um i don't know if you've been talking about these on other episodes but um the virgin mimosas make it into this movie you know like yes. her thing she's always like there's like okay yeah they're either in a scene of this so yeah, do you have any nancy thoughts because you didn't actually get to be on a nancy yeah. episode um i would say that my nancy thoughts are or my nancy concerns kind of mm -hmm. to what ben was saying is like that increasingly, I don't think Nancy's like self aware exactly about sure. the, the world that she's the world that she's existing in, sure. and, and a world that's changing rapidly. Yeah, and I think that like when you talk to someone, like you know, when you see like even like you know older celebrities who are quote unquote liberal or whatever now who just say something totally from like 1985, yeah, yes. and you're like, what? Like, I don't, I don't, I worry that Nancy Myers is not paying attention. And sure. while it's fun to watch, like the intern is like a movie about like an old straight white guy, like finding himself again. Like, is that where we're at? <laughs> right. Know? And how all you know? young men are pussies. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, so I like Nancy Myers, but like, like increasingly the people that she's sort of venerating, I think are bad. Okay. Do we want to do our rankings? Oh, wow. Of Nancy's? Yeah. Sure. Do we want to do the box office game first? Yes. Okay. Uh, September 8th, 2017. <sighs> Never forget. Um, number two at the box office is home again with $8 million. Now the number one film this year, this uh -huh. weekend opened to slightly higher number of $123 million. Uh, this was the film it, it, right. Yes. The one film to buck the trend of this being the worst week. <clears throat> right. And Pennywise is going to target the home again universe next. <laughs> oh, fully. Yeah. He's going to go down that drain, put drain pipe until he gets to fucking Michael Sheen or whatever. <laughs> He's the next Sam Smith. Pickle, I'll tell you. Pickle, you want to stop watch? <laughs> That just scared me in my headphones because I didn't. I wasn't looking at you, and I was like, "Ah, uh, yeah, I, it." I couldn't get through that movie. We all get development like deals it. down yeah. here. It's fine. I thought it was badly made. It's it's 
very. I generic. wanted Fukunaga's version. I agree. Sure. I think the script's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and I like I like Mama. I think Mama's pretty well directed. Mama. Oh, it's the same director. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Andy. Uh, machete? Uh, machete. Yes. yes. Handy machete. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh! yeah. Perfect. I think it is a very watchable like, a car movie, movie with a bunch of and kids. And who is it going to be? It's Chastain, Xavier Dolan. <laughs> Xavier Dolan's just got the one scene, but uh, you got, um, you Ch- got it's McAvoy. It's Chastain, Hater, McAvoy. So you Hater. have like three big people. And then the other four are like Isaiah Mustafa, who's the old Spice guy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, ben Ransom. And then, like, two actors I don't know, I feel like. Um, you've also got Jay Ryan. An actor I don't know. Uh, James Ransom, yeah. Andy Nicole Bean. Alexander. Don't know him. Yeah. And then, yeah, Xavier, it, the second part of It, a book that Stephen King wrote after eating one mountain of cocaine, <laughs> uh, is like... The, That's how he like ordered it, One too. brig of dune yeah. mountain of cocaine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He called his dealer and said, can you bring me a brig of coke? <laughs> like, is the second part of the book is, like, you know that It is back because there's this, like, terrible hate crime in which, like, yeah. a oh, gay, gay guy, guy is yeah. murdered. Yeah. Right. And Xavier Dolan, I guess, is playing that character. Correct. Oh, boy, okay. So I, there's something with Xavier Dolan where I think he's just, like, Sign me up, like you know, because well, he's gonna win an Oscar for Bad Times at the El Royale. Oh my God, that accent! <laughs> playing Phil Spector, he's also in Boy a French Canadian. He's in Boy Erased, playing a guy with a a black eye. That's never explained. That's never explained. Who salutes at everyone? Do you know that yeah. he played a, a, a fear in the uh, uh, Quebecois uh, dub of Inside Out, Pixar's Inside Out? <laughs> Is that true? That he makes oh, a lot of money doing. I'm. I swear like, to God, like French Canadian when they, dubbing. When the big animated movies go over there, he has done several of those. Do you know about Mel- Melanie Laurent's dad? No, her dad is the voice of Homer in France. Really? really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Number three. <laughs> that rules at the box office. Uh-huh. Is a comedy. That's so funny that we were saying like this is the worst weekend to release a movie, and they were like, "Oh well, at least it'll go unnoticed." And then the biggest right. opening in it the history just, of like, that swallowed genre. it whole. Right? right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It right. was crazy. I mean, it is crazy that it did that well. That's, so that's one of the biggest gaps between number one and it number has two to be. in history. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, so number three is like a comedy that's now in its fourth week. Okay. That like uh, kind of did pretty well despite not existing. A big Ned Flanders. Hit. Excuse me, Ned Flanders. Not oh, oh, Ned Flanders. better. Even funnier. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't exist. It did pretty well. What was the final total? 75. Did 75? What kind of movie is it? It's like a, it's like a spoofy comedy. Oh. Spoofy. It's a spoofy movie. Well, <laughs> well, spoofy. It's a little spoofy. It had been number one the previous three weeks. The previous three weeks? Yes. Fuck, I know what this is. And is In those the light between oceans. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, that's like a spoof of someone's uh, earnest uh, attempt at making a drama, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, does it does it feature a big comedy star? No, not An really. Two, like two sort of major names, but not, I wouldn't call them any of them exclusively the like comedy stars. I guess one of them is more of a comical. But they're actor. they're actors. They're not like people who came out. Of oh, uh, the Light Blue Queen Oceans is the first film to go direct to sweater. Sorry, I just wanted to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> just occurred to me. Forty-five comedy points. <laughs> uh, shall I just tell you? No. Okay. Wait to say more things about it. Comedy, like a buddy comedy. Um, I, I, it's got like a title that sounds like it's a oh, parody. Oh, oh, but oh, oh, oh. It's, it's the not. Hitman's Bodyguard. The Hitman's Bodyguard. Oh, oh god. Yes, a yeah. movie that doesn't exist. You're Ryan right, that Reynolds movie and Samuel exist. Jackson. They yes. have someone else in that movie. Uh, Salma Hayek, and they're greenlighting a sequel. There is a sequel. The Bodyguard's Hitman. It's the Hitman's Bodyguard's oh, wife oh. or whatever. Richard E. Grant is in that, I believe. Oh, is he? Weird. Gary Oldman. Weird. No, From the director wrong? of Kick Ass Two. I think you might be right. Yeah, Gary Oldman, Salma Hayek, Ryan Reynolds, Samuel Jackson. They they are making a sequel. Number four is another horror movie, um, a prequel, okay, a prequel within a prequel to a spinoff in a larger horror universe. So it's uh, Annabelle Creation. Annabelle Creation, which made one hundred and two million dollars. Yeah. about the creation of the doll that was in The Conjuring. There is only I'm mystified <laughs> one Conjuring film that has not made a hundred million dollars. Oh my god! No, <laughs> Annabelle. <laughs> the first one, yeah. But for for a horror franchise, that's crazy. I know. Because usually one of them will overperform and usually they hover around like 70 or 80 if it's a big franchise until they drop off. And like none, the two Conjurings, Annabelle Creation of all crested. Give her a proper title. The nun. Richard wrote and directed the film. I just think we should refer to it with this proper title. Yeah. I mean, it was part of the Trolls universe, but it's a whole complicated (laughs) thing. You must be really stressed out getting ready for your world tour. For Trolls Creation. (laughs) (laughs) Trolls again. <laughs> oh, 
how are your trolls doing? Oh, my trolls, my trolls are good. My tro- my trolls just moved to L.A. Oh no, they're in a guest house. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably gonna sweep up this pilot season, right? Did they make yeah. like a pocket oh, yeah. watch movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they made a pocket watch. One of my trolls is sleeping with Guinness Berg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know my trolls is so oh, boy, this episode's a masterpiece. Yeah. Number five at the box office is an insanely depressing movie Great. that bummed me the fuck out when like I saw it. Oceans? <laughs> about like, oh god, I don't know. I'll give it away if I tell you what it's about. Uh, is it is it new or has it been out for a couple weeks? At six this weeks point? at this point. It's been out for six weeks at yeah. this point. Was it a pretty big hit? It was like a good hit for the size of movie that it was. It like it's did a good kind drama. Well. It's like a depressing drama. It's like a thriller slash like super bleak mystery thriller kind of thing. Uh, uh, what was the final total? Thirty three. Oh, so it was like a smaller film that did. Oh, oh, oh! Is it Wind River? Wind River. Yeah, a movie oh, I don't really get the, either. A nasty movie. Yeah, nasty it's a nasty piece movie. of work. But John Bernthal's fucking great in that thing. That yeah, one scene he I kills. I hate that scene. I don't like the scene. I, scene. I like John Bernthal a lot. I think he's a very good actor. John Bernthal's mm-hmm. great. It's just crazy how many movies he is in for one scene. I know. Like Baby Driver, he's in one scene. Widow's Upcoming, he's, he's in one scene. He's kind of the best at showing yeah. up for like one scene. I know. Yeah. He's a weird one. Do you know a movie he's crazy good in, which I would have given a blanky nomination? Uh, CBS is the class? Yes. Okay, <laughs> Who's in that? I know it was. That's a weird ca- Lizzie Kaplan. There's that scene. Jason yeah. Ritter. Uh, uh, Jesse Tyler, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Ferguson right? yeah. uh, Lucy Punch. Yeah. No, but there's that scene early Lawrence on in the Olivier. class where he, <laughs> yeah, where he goes, this house is not well built, which is like his comedy line in the pilot. Oh, it's very weird. Uh, you, know, in my head. you know, the famous story where like uh, there was some big CBS upfront thing uh, when the show was about to or they were doing a press tour or whatever. They were in uh-huh. Vegas with the whole cast before the show premiered. The cast of the class? Yes. Class cast. Right. And I think it was. That's he, your podcast about the class. Right. Yep. It was James <laughs> Zero Burroughs or Les Moonves or someone who was like at the top of their food chain. Probably Burroughs. Said sure. to them, like, I want you to go out and have a great night tonight together because this is the last right. night of your life that you're going to be able to be in a space like this unrecognized right, 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 like right. they were just like a week from now two of you cannot be in public without having a hard day's night chase ensue it they wow. thought they had like friends on yeah. their hands yeah and they said like they gave those six actors like so much training for how to deal eight with eight actors eight actors. eight the yeah. amount of fame they were about to yeah. Yeah, when was, did uh, the class premiere? Uh, two thousand and six. So he got Modern Family two years later, right after, pretty much. Yes, yeah. some of them like you know Ferguson, Bertha, and then some of them like Heather Golden Hirsch. You know, just just sort of didn't yeah. figure it Why out. Why would you tell someone? Although that? she's really good in Hail Caesar. That's mean. Um, it's really depressing. It is really weird. Uh, uh, that movie's insane. I mean, that TV show's insane. It was, was set just, in Philadelphia. Had uh, no what black people in it, and uh, people pointed that out. It was created from the creators of Friends. Yeah. And people were like, there seems to be a pattern with your shows. And they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was really weird. What were you going to say? Sorry. Uh, Bernthal's really good in Snitch. Oh, I haven't the seen The Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie, sure. which is otherwise pretty perfunctory. But he gives like a really fucking great performance. He's actually the, the co-lead in that. I would say he has as much screen time as uh, The Rock, which is weird. Cool. I just, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to snitch about that movie. So I don't uh, know what ben about. Ben is vaping. Giving you the light. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so we're Ben's done. Ben's new thing is when the episode is over, he vapes, he pulls on his vape. It so literally just looks off. like a USB. Yeah. It looks like Ben's backing up his data. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming. Oh, rankings. We got to do yeah. our rankings. Yeah, so that, rank. that was the five. We went through the five. Rankings. I think I made a list. Let me see. I want you to go first because I'm between two things in a position. If you have your list at hand, otherwise I'll just go. No, I can go. And we're not counting home again because it's its own thing. Yeah, we're we're talking through yeah. the six Nancys. Movies that – the Nancy Myers movies that were made on Earth. Yes. Correct. <laughs> right. The terrestrial Myers. Right. Over. So it's uh, actually zero movies. Weird. Okay. Right. right. Uh, all right. So number not, one – Not movies that uh, were executive produced by a Slash, the evil mi- mutant ninja turtle and Dimension X. I'm sorry. Go on. Continue. Crank? Nancy Crane. I, I mean, I could have gone a bunch of ways. I thought it was better to do a deeper poll. I don't know. I'm an idiot. Go on. You're not an idiot. Okay, so number one right. for I'm me. very big and smart and special. <laughs> number Just one. Just like Pico. Is nice something's boy. gotta give. Okay. Number two for me is The Parent Trap. Mm-hmm. Number three for me is The Inter. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Rene Russo. Um, number four for me. I think is it's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. Mm-hmm. 
Number five for me is the holiday. Mm-hmm. And number six is what women want. Okay, we're going to diverge on this. Di- you're saying this is a divergent list? Yes. Okay. Divergent and surgeon. Okay, ready? Yeah. Number one, the intern. Okay. Number two, the parent trap. Okay. Number three, something's got to give. Crazy. That should be number one. Num- number four, it's complicated. Okay, so we're not too different. Number five, what women want. Yeah. I mean, I figured that's what you were. Num- number six, the holiday. Yeah, no, what women want dead last. That one's got to be. No, I, the I, holiday's really bad. I think you. I mean, I, I don't like okay, the, half holiday. Of the holiday. Well, let me right, ask exactly. you. Wait, but which half? Right, because the, the, it was a legendary episode we where over which half is Fran good. So I liked hear... both halves, and then right. Griff and I each liked one half. So for I, once, you're taking Ben's side. You're going to be the tiebreaker. Tell us which half you think works in that movie, because we both agree that only one half works. But we I, disagree on the half. I, I, mm. I think the Kate Winslet half is the good half. Thank you! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Griffin has gone fully... He's gone oh home again mad. Oh my god, Griffin's just going, he's just having a Jack Black speaking in tongues freak out. Uh, here's to you, uh, Mrs. Rebidiboop. <laughs> what a skin crawling performance. I, uh, uh, yeah, I tweeted something about Home Again once, or not Home Again, the holiday, about how Kate Winslet does, so she scats in it, right? Doesn't she? Yeah, he, oh, sure. he, he She has goes her like scribbly boo or something. Yeah, yeah and no he way. goes, You're it's, the best scribbly boo I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, I have I can't remember the last time I was this happy. The oh, sense I'm of professional so, so accomplishment, I feel. Let's go have a nice meal in the backyard. With, with, <sighs> I'd love that. Let's go screen a movie on my projector. Let's finish oh. Ben Sinclair's glass of wine. We didn't talk about wine. the picnic, but oh well, that's oh, okay. The There's nothing yeah. to talk about. They have a picnic? <laughs> <laughs> These boys she met the day before. Yeah. <laughs> But like, he, he they knows knew how to work the projector. Was. Yeah, and and he, they knew where all the, everything was in the kitchen. Also, he's screening like a full length thirty five millimeter print, which means like he's gonna have to change reels. He's gonna have to change like, reels. Also, it's are they like on a seventy like, sex comedy. And I the guess? girls are there, right? Yeah. And it's like a weeknight, and like if I'm the neighbors, I'm like, and like oh, Candace Bergen's up. probably like topless in it or something. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, she's like topless in Saint Tropez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dickie, you're the best in the biz. Thanks for having Friend me Friend of the again. show, Dickie Number Lawson. Six. Yep. Are, are, how, how am I doing with regards to Yoshida? I think, I think Yoshida's at six. level footing, right? Oh, yeah. Boy. And JD's at five. Is that correct? That sounds right. That JD right. episode. Uh, the, uh, Billy Lynn? Yeah, that was something. He, he has actually talked about maybe wanting to take some time before yeah, I think he comes he wants back a to the show break. again because he feels that was, that, the pressure I was of listening how, to that. I was yeah. cleaning my bedroom and I was like, Jesus Christ, that's yeah. quite a feat. Yeah. All I of mean, the whole thing, not All just the envelope. Right. A, the fact but, that he did that amount of research and was able to talk yeah. so at length about every aspect of it. And B, the envelope is the greatest joke that anyone has ever done in the history of man. Right. It uh, can't be eclipsed. It yeah. cannot be eclipsed. Right. Uh, New Moon. Uh, Richard, uh, people should read all your work on Vanity Fair. Uh, you're you're one of the best out there. Well, thanks. Um, I feel likewise about you, you boys. Oh, you should. Uh, you good, good boys. See your trolls. Good, special, big boys. Nice see your trolls. Boys. Trolls World World Tour comes out next year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Everyone should go. Um, make me richer than I am. Now, do you have any involvement in the Trolls Netflix series, or have, did you farm that? I out? have some bad news. Trolls World Tour has been delayed till 2020. Really? I, I have to go. I have to call my agent. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Please remember to rate, review, subscribe. Thanks to Andrew Gouda for our social media. Social media. Jesus social Christ. media. Lay Montgomery for our theme song. <laughs> Thanks to Joe Bowen and Pat Reynolds for our artwork. Go to blankiesdiary.com for some real nerdy shit. Go to our T Public store for some real nerdy merchandise. And as always, I forgot to make the announcement, so I'm going to do them now. Next week. Oh, yeah. Right. We're going home again. To Ben's choice. Yes. We're going Something to... we haven't done in a year. Yeah, that's right. A long Ben's time. choice. He chose. I'm so excited. And it's going to be a little bit like our Jack Reacher episode where we're going right. to discuss two films on the occasion of the second one coming out. Right. Ben, do you want to announce it? What are we going to do? Wreck it, Ralph. <laughs> two. We're going to wreck it. We're going to break the internet. We're going to break the internet. And With this episode on Wreck It, Ralph 2, Break the Internet. <laughs> yeah. You're right, 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 right. You're right. Yeah. When Ben hears the two friends, he thinks Ralph and Vanellope, and now he's finally going to let them take over the podcast. We can discuss Nick Weiger's hot take that it's not a video game. It's a movie. It's a candy movie. We'll talk about that for two hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's but, plenty to talk about. But then after that, first oh, announcement. Right. Some of you may have guessed. 
our next mini series is going to be. Ooh, it's a Griff's choice. Ooh, did it get <laughs> chilly in here? Ooh, Ben, why did the lights go out? Why are these stripes on the walls? What's it's happening? Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> why is there too much CG? Why is Eva Green being cast in these? Why are your roles? eyes so big? <laughs> Uh, uh, why are we going to have a problematic number of conversations about Johnny Depp on Mike? <laughs> oh, God, so many. Uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, baby. You've wanted it. I got two words for you. It's showtime. Uh, Dumbo. It's <laughs> big eyes. showtime. So Her tune eyes. in next week so big. for Ben Rex the Podcast. Yep. Tune in after that for Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yep. And as always, 